Is everybody ready? Is everybody ready there? I, I'm ready, sir. I, I need my deals. Cashiers, are you ready? I'm gonna open the doors now. Get to high ground. There's, there's already casualties. There's someone rung 911, not 999. Here we go, guys. I'm opening the doors. Go, go. Boom, 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 boom. Get out of the way. I need my Bob, volume 18. Prices, values. Rice cooker. Give me that rice cooker, motherfucker. Is, 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 is that a different cheekery? I said, good lord. The lord in the back of me, me want that vigorine. $10 off tonight. Get your hands up. Send your baby hand. Stop it. Right. Everybody freeze. We're trying to do a podcast in this Kmart. Stop it. Oh, no, we're, we're in Zellers, Rip. Rip Zellers. We're in Zellers for Black Friday. We're live on the scene trying, and we thought we'd sit down with a microphone and do a lovely podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hi. We're in the last surviving Zellers, which is, I don't remember where it's located, but there is one Zellers left, so we're in there. In Newf- Newfoundland, Canada. Oh, shit. I don't know. I'm going to check. Who knows? Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 116 of the Manga Readers Happy Hour podcast. You've heard right, this is a manga and anime podcast. The bestest, the realest shit in the game, as they say. Don't know who said There's it. There's nothing realer than this one, yes. There ain't nothing realer than this one. There ain't no pretenses on this one. <laughs> okay, wait. There there are two Zellers left. One is in Et- Edobicoke, Ontario. The other is in Nipane, Ontario, which are near Toronto. I'm glad we've had that information so we can continue with the show. Yes. We are Rip one of those two locations, just in case you want to come find us in the past on Black Friday. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's where we are. In the, in the past. There's people right. around us grabbing waffle irons and guns and uh, belts and bop bops and all sorts around us, but we're going to soldier on and carry on through the storm and the crowds and potentially and probably curb stomp a granny or two. But my name is Simon. Ben Noon is vacant. I am going to... Yeah, I'm going to punch a granny. And to my virtual left is Manimal. Who are you going to attack in the Black Friday sales? I don't attack. I I am just... I I don't. No. Probably should have thought of something before you said that. I don't attack. Yep. I, uh... I just wax. Hmm. He I waxes. don't attack. I just know. <laughs> he just knows. He just, he just like, literally, no, no, no. He just cowers no. into the fetal position as people no, charge around him. No, it's like a nice no. Because there's varying kinds of no. There's like, no, which is just kind of like a, it's a very tame form of no. Okay. So it's not a, it's not a desperate or panicked no. No, it's, it's just, just like, a, no. Could you please Some, not? Someone's like, oh, I'm going to jump in the river. And you're like, oh, no. That's the most Canadian no I've ever Canadian. heard. No. Hey, bud. Fargo. <laughs> Just oh, no. out for a rip out of you, bud? <laughs> and, uh, oh, no, you put your friend into the wood jibber, didn't you? Yeah, oh, yes, no. yes. To his virtual left, um, holding down the fort, heading up aisle eight, is Corin. Uh, I am Corin. I am drinking whiskey for dinner, and I'm going to punch that eight-year-old who's going after the Transformers toys. Yeah, fuck you. Gen 1 Optimus yeah. Prime on the shelf. I'm having that. I, I need my Combiner Menasaur. I need the arm. I need the Stunticons. <laughs> punch that eight-year-old. Take I that, forgot eight-year-old. All of the stunt- Are you guys I forgot, all attacking poor... I forgot all the Stunticons' names. I don't, I don't know. know. None of them them mattered. And rounding out the cast, you've heard him. He's a familiar voice. He's not been here for a few weeks, but we are so happy to have him back. It's Lego Maestro. Hello. I am. I happen not to be attacking any poor defenseless people. Um, that, so We what, had just dug him up from the ruins of the Mosby Hotel. He's uh, <laughs> still in full body cast, but he's recovering greatly. <laughs> yes, but I couldn't miss such a great happy day like the black friday yes it always reminds me about how human souls are just basically up for sale and all morals fly out the window when there is a sexy nekomimi figure Uh, human souls are on aisle 19 that sounds oddly specific (laughs) (laughs) i'm heading to 19 aisle 19 okay i need to get a new soul after i sold the last one like i was up to 
aisle 19 and he's stopping on Nekomimi figurines, which are conveniently in the same aisle. Don't know why, but who knows? Oh, yeah. I've got some burning questions to ask you guys, and it's very important that I get these off my chest. How was your week, Manimal? I need to know. My week? What happened in my week? Okay, I so I should have mentioned you. this. I should have mentioned this on last episode, November 25th, death anniversary of Castro. <laughs> Rip! Castro! <laughs> it, again, it's amusing, because when Castro died, I was like, oh no, a character from Black Ops died. And now, <laughs> and now I know entirely more, so are you, it's amusing. Are you wearing your Avocastro t-shirt to, uh, Hell, to pay yeah, respects? Hell yeah, I am. Of course yeah. you are. Castro, you know, again, I think of historical figures as characters in movies, basically. Mm-hmm. You know? Castro's a good movie character, I think. He's, you know, same with, like, Reagan and Stalin. They're just good movie characters. Yeah. You know? Hitler, too. Yep, they just happened to murder a couple million of people. That's, you know, Stalin is one of the most complex villain characters in all of cinema. <laughs> How else are you going to get a movie made about you? Come on. You, you ain't going to get a movie unless you've killed a few people. Or yeah. just, like, saved an inner city school or something. Or say, yeah. I guess you could be a good person. I suppose if you had to, but you know. You, you could. But as for my week, I don't know. I mean, we went back to school, but I didn't really because we weren't doing anything this week. So I was like, forget about that. And then, oh, I went to the Polish restaurant. What would you know? I got crepes. They were That's really super, good. Super awesome restaurant. Hell yeah. And um, oh, I found the National Film Board of Canada website, which has public domain films on it. And let me tell you, there's some good, there's actually good stuff about Inuit and Nunavut and stuff like that. And uh, there was one called Waiting for Fidel from the oh, 70s. Oh, God's sake. So these, <laughs> these, of course these, you found this no, one. These two, these two newfies, one of them was a uh, capitalist, the other was a newfie. socialist. They went, they went to Cuba and they were going to interview Castro. But meanwhile, Seriously. they were walking around and they were finding all these crazy things like a school where, like, the tuition is paid for by sweatshop child labor, basically. Oh, yeah, and then, Cuba's not a great place. Oh, it's, it was crazy. And then Don't there's a mental hospital. That. There's a mental hospital where all these, uh, the patients are, like, digging holes and stuff, and then the college where they're working, and the, everyone's arguing about everything they're seeing, and what do you know? Castro doesn't appear at the end of the movie. <laughs> I wanted Castro to come and save all those uh, hole diggers. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but it was funny because the film was about Cuba at first, and then it was about these two people arguing, <laughs> and I, it was enjoyable. And then there's a, there's one from the 90s uh, called Mela's Lunch, and it was the kind of video you'd show in a classroom because it's about this, like, Indian girl who, like, is eating weird lunch, and everyone makes fun of her, and they're all wearing, like, different colored jackets because it's, like, 92, so 80s <laughs> fashion is still a thing. Look, in the early 90s, we fucking love multicolored jackets. Oh, yeah. literally everyone has a different colored jacket, and then there's the hair scrunchies going wild. Yeah, and everything. everyone had and, a tracksuit jacket, and they were the best well, thing they ever. Did. And, and then poppers. there was, like, this... The, the stereotypical bully kid and stuff like that, and then it didn't even... And then there was one part where it's like, please pause for class discussion. Was yeah. the entire thing done in rap version? Oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Don't it make fun been. of the Indian's food. It's just no. because they're different from you. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. That's but exactly was... what that rap would have been. I know. Oh, it totally would have <laughs> been. I've seen yeah, enough it of totally them. would have been. Don't... Don't make fun of Indian food. They smell like curry. It just would have been something even oh, worse. Oh, why no, did you go I'm there. saying the rap would be worse. Well, that um, episode just got <laughs> got hit with the first racist comment. But... That's not even. That's how I said the song would contain that because they'd be trying to be sensitive, but they wouldn't be. Someone call Mr. T. He'll he'll do it. Mr. Mother. Yo, there is mother. no other like a mother. Did I ever tell you about the time I went to WrestleMania and uh, Mr. T was inducted to the Hall of Fame, the Wrestling oh, Hall of Fame, yeah. and he didn't mention wrestling once? Like, not once in his 25 minute speech Mr. did he. T. Mr. T, because he headlined WrestleMania 1 and bought name value to it. Like, he was really, you know, quite a big deal and, it, like, and had a measurable impact in terms of getting WrestleMania into the mainstream at first in the 80s. Yeah. Mr. T was one of the first wrestlers that, like, really defined his own, like, narrative path. Yeah. yeah. 
He was he Mr. Was, T is just one of the best public characters of all time. Exactly. And he He's um just a cool dude. He never mentioned wrestling once, but he started doing the uh he started talking about his mother and he kept mentioning his mother and he kept making this analogy about how hard his mother had it and how she was earning yeah. tokens. And what was the most frustrating thing was he was talking about these tokens his mother earned every time that she went without food and day. My mother got a token and she was collecting these tokens. But like I kind of got his analogy because what he was saying was she was getting like almost tokens of kindness and that would pay off in the afterlife or in heaven or something that was sort of what he was getting at which i understood like a very sad story that we're ridiculing right now but he never he never explicitly said oh these tokens were this he just sort of kept saying tokens so it's confusing and then did his mother work for a company that paid in like company money (laughs) only for acts of kindness it's like you got a token and there's some food. Um, no, but the thing that he did that you've reminded me of is when he kept talking about his mother. And he's like, and I don't just love my mother on Mother's Day. I love my mother on her birthday. I love my mother on Memorial Day. I love my mother yeah. on Christmas Day. And the more he kept doing it, can you remember the, the what chant for Stone Cold? It was like, after everything he said it, what? What? The entire audience at this whole, at Hall of Fame <laughs> ceremony starts going, what? Mother's Day. What? Valentine's Day. What? Oh my God. Everyone's yeah, doing it. Minutes. Stone Cold <laughs> is in it. the audience. Yeah, sorry. You do know his rap song, right? About his mom? Yeah, 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 yeah. Respect. That's classic. Respect your mother. And he had no clue why people were watching him. And the best of all, Stone Cold's oh. in the front row, pissing himself laughing. Oh and it gosh. was just the best thing ever. <laughs> Mr. T was never known for his public speaking skills, necessarily. And eventually Kane came on to, like, usher him off and said, you've just taken everyone else's time. Remember on the A-team when all his friends had to casually knock him out to take him on a plane? <laughs> That's because his character was terrified of planes. Yeah, I know, it's just funny. <laughs> he cut into Razor Ramon's time, which was gutting. Anyway, I'm going totally off track. Sorry, man, we'll carry on with your week. That's all right. I don't, I don't have much. There are just some amusing films I watch, amusing public access films, and actual good stuff on there, too. And... I didn't really do anything exciting. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. You, you, you've provided us with plenty of entertainment and fun, warm memories, Mr. T, anyway, so that's all good. Oh, yeah. Corin, I suspect you... I've got a hunch that you had a busy-ish week. It's been a busy fucking week. <laughs> uh, to put it lightly, it was Thanksgiving here in America. Woo! <clears throat> Happy Thanksgiving. So, uh, that was last Thursday, so Wednesday I go home. And I get sit ready, and I cook, help cook and on Thursday, help cook, and we eat. And we go see my grandmother, who's old and infirm and can't come out of the home anymore. And Grandma tells crazy stories that are slightly concerning. <laughs> of the home? Or... <laughs> uh, well, you know, she's old. She's got, like, dementia and shit. But, like, she was talking about, like, she basically just started describing as, like, oh... But she related something to us that I'm assuming must have been a weird memory she had from, like, the 1940s because it was, like, super racist. Okay. Uh, and she, she, didn't re- she didn't relate it as being about herself. It was, like, other people saying weird racist shit. Okay. But uh, very odd. Yeah, she related a story about how she got to go to the slaughterhouse, and the slaughterhouse employees showed all the people visiting where they would be slaughtered. And she talked about get people getting loaded onto trains, and it was very important they leave all their belongings behind and clean up really well before they get on the trains. Is that... <laughs> and it basically was in sequence describing the Holocaust, but oh. instead it was like Soylent Green as people. Soylent Green, exactly. End. What? It was really fucking weird. Did she just watch some kind of movie or something? Yeah. I I don't again. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I hope so. There, to be honest, I think she just has a bunch of weird memories coming up. I hope that's a movie and not a real life memory. <laughs> kind of freaked us all out. But at the same time, she still thinks she lives in her old house, and she still thinks it's like five years ago. So it's who knows. Yeah. Love my grandmother. But then that was Thursday, and then Friday I did stories on the forum because I, I asked people to give me stories to review for them, and I did that. Wow. And that was fun. And because I did that, I got really inspired to write a bunch of stuff, so I did, though it wasn't a bunch of stuff that I was necessarily planning to write, although I did work on some of that stuff that I was planning to write. Uh, short story, short, long story short, um, 
look forward to the next uh, Bleach MR storyline. Yeah! Oh, the next Corrin Saga. No Corrin Saga f- free. No, I, I, I worked on I Corrin no Saga, beach. and I, I worked on Bleach. Beach. At the, I, I worked on both. Don't, don't give me that. I was pla- okay. the, the difference is I wasn't planning on working on Bleach. I just it just kind of happened. God, I miss Bleach. But uh, oh, man. I actually came up with a good subtitle now, better than the last one I came up, with, which was just kind of I just vomited that one out. But this one's going to be called, and true Bleach style, something that's completely nonsensical and has nothing to do with the plot. Memories unto the dawn. Yeah, <laughs> that is a. Bleach, uh, bleach title that, of one that of the games. A something. Bleach title I've ever heard of one. So, worked on that. So, okay. got a lot of reviews done. Got a lot of writing done. And that was uh, came home today. And now I'm uh, drinking whiskey for dinner because uh, the idea of food is revolting because I ate so goddamn much this last couple of days. <laughs> food be revolting because of too much meat. I, I, I. I don't know. So you done? You've been busy, busy, busy boy. Busy boy. He's done writing. Can't wait for some bleach shit come out. Uh, yeah, I, funnily enough, I was talking about bleach uh, yesterday. I was on the subreddit for anime, and someone was asking about what is the shortcomings of bleach. They've never watched it. They don't care about spoilers. They just want to know why people ragged on it and why it was why people don't fondly remember it. I'm interested in what the answers were because I have a few mm-hmm. ideas. But, well, uh... I said the the two my two cents that I added in was literally when people compare it to other shonens is that a lot each ago the main protagonist didn't really have a a goal outside of protecting those around him like and he wasn't really a proactive character he's very much more of a reactive he really uh, was character which was he didn't want to be the soul king man or a yeah. captain um so he didn't have something. Like uh, like that, and the one that bugged me, a very personal one for me, was the constantly shifting power scales, and you couldn't oh really get a God. foothold in <laughs> who was what. It's like Let's okay, Captain Zarak is even... the strongest captain. Wait, no, he's not. He got beat by someone with just a shikai. Wait, no, now he can take two captains. Oh, never mind. Nope, got beaten by some humans who have some odd powers. Whoever is the strongest is whoever Tite Kubo thinks is the coolest right now. Now, the thing with that is. I totally agree, and one of the things that I hate, and a pet peeve of mine in Shonen, well, in anime in general, but Shonen in particular, is strength rules all. I very much prefer the strategy will close any gap in power, and every fight should be circumstantial. Anyone can beat anyone given the correct strategy and circumstances, and the sequence of events that plays out in their favor. This this is why JoJo is so fantastic. Mm Mm-hmm. JoJo, yeah. And I've heard uh, Hunter x Hunter apparently does that yep, quite heavily. I've never watched it. They are um, merciless with that. So I always gravitate towards that. So that's something that, you know, I'm not just saying, oh, it's because they weren't stronger. I don't know what that accent was. I don't know who and that was. Did you mention, did you mention the um, the whole Rukia Ichigo thing? Shut up. Oh, shut, shut up. up. <laughs> that is the the <laughs> Although it is funny that you mention Ichigo's um, like drive or whatever he's trying to get to, because that's mm-hmm. kind of something I want to bring up when we get to whatever you've been watching. But we'll save that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. We'll talk a bit more about Bleach after. I'm sure Manimal will absolutely love that. Oh, I will. But oh, I want to say one thing. Go for change. It. Okay. I've talked about the Gene Vault experience and stuff before, but there's a new revelation. So, so vacant. Imagine you have 13k. Okay, I've got 13k right now. Yeah. Do you want to go to New York, walk around to see all of Gene's favorite spots with him, eat at his favorite New York restaurant, <laughs> and jam with him at his studio for $13,000? This guy must be desperate for money. <laughs> Wait, Is he anticipating it, it, all these lawsuits? 13000 for walking around New York with him and going to his studio and jamming all day? Yeah, okay, this is what's crazy. But it was 50000 for him to come to your house for 20 yes. minutes? Yes, this is what's crazy because, okay, he has the vault, which is worth – it's 2000 for the vault and meet and greet, basic. But it was 25000 to hang out with him at a studio for two hours, and now it's only 13000 to walk around New York, eat at a restaurant, be at a studio for two hours. And, These mining goals and are being met. <laughs> How shocking. He's, 
He's trying to play pack some like loan sharks or something because he's getting. Oh, I know what it is. With all it's these crazy. Hollywood names getting uh, bought up and lawsuits coming, he's just <laughs> saving that money. It's, it's <laughs> Gene Simmons, please just come out and tell us how many women you sexually assaulted before this all goes over. <laughs> well, I mean, with with all of uh, with all the 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 road action. See, I was trying to think of a clever word, but I couldn't. All the road trips. The fucking they did on tour. My brain doesn't work sometimes. All the fucking that he did when he was on yeah. tour. Yeah, but no, I'm just that's uh, you know, 13k. There you go. There's something to do with your money if you want. How shocking that he lowered his prices. Bargain. Wait, question. When yeah. you eat at his favorite restaurant, does he pay? Oh, that's a good question. Or do you are you expect is he going to like to order pay? for you so you know what his best stuff is? Yeah. All it says, all it says, is lunch with Gene at at one of his favorite New York City restaurants. I mean, there's got to be a lot of good New York City restaurants, though. Oh, oh, wait, it counts. It counts. Actually, it counts all meals, and you get um, two days in New York with this price and a limousine. I mean, that's kind of cool. Actually, it's, it's not sounding too bad at this point. Honestly, this is more actually, reasonable than the fifty k one. If, to if, be fair, if you're eating at one of Gene Simmons' his favorite fucking restaurants in New York, that's like a pricey restaurant too. Oh, probably. And yeah. actually, like, I mean, if you ha- if you're like an old person, old Kiss fan of outrageous money, that's not too crazy compared to what he was offering before. No, oh, yeah. that's not reasonable. That that one, the thirteen k one, is actually sort of doable. Yeah. So like I'm betting that you could probably spend go to New York City, like especially going to like Manhattan or something. You could easily find like a thousand dollar night hotel that's real nice. Oh God, probably. Or yeah. like, and uh, this restaurant probably costs like a thousand dollars a plate if it's Gene <laughs> Simmons eating there. Yeah. Unless it's gonna, it ends up being like McDonald's on my. Yeah, it's just like, hey guys, this is my favorite <laughs> restaurant, McDonald's. Order. This off is my favorite food. McDonald's in all of New York City. Check out this double double. Like. Yeah. But notice that, again, it's amusing, the whole Gene Vault saga, because he's only sold one house experience so far. Who bought that That's one too many. What, that? I don't know, but it could be a fake on the website to make it look like someone bought it, because it just has a generic name like like Michael or something under it. I don't know. Oh, uh, I mean, okay. I, I don't know. I've don't seen know. a lot of people spend a lot of money on less. Yeah, so it could just be a millionaire who's like, huh, I don't even like Kiss, but I'll have a gene in my house, whatever. Yeah. There's <laughs> market for pet rocks out as, there. As so many people know. who are big fans of Kiss back in the day, one of them's got to be multi-millionaire by now. Oh, oh definitely. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. There are even some musicians that it could be. Who knows? I'll say, Paul Stanley. It's, it's, it's got to have lined up with someone. Yeah, Paul. <laughs> Paul's like, I'm going to have Gene just, over. Hey, Gene, you ain't been around in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you. <laughs> They're not friendly with each other, actually. They don't have a good relationship. That would be what would be though. amazing if they did that. Yeah. They've been in the what same What if you pay them to so... come just so we could fuck with them for like an hour? Well, that's exactly, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> and then eventually he'd be like, I have to go. Unless he has some kind of contract or something that states that he has to be there for two got to be under contract for that kind of money. Yeah. yeah. You know, you could change this to another thing. You can just make it GoFundMe and say, I want to meet Gene Simmons for 13 Oh, yeah. Cause, oh, no, that's what, that's what like Mare is saying. Get Gene Simmons to perform the bop bop with me. <laughs> oh, my God. That'd be amazing. That's a dream come true. Gene yeah. Simmons, if you're listening, we got an offer for you. I'm sure you're out there. Wait, 50 cents. Look, at this 50 cents going to be that, too? We're getting as about as much good press as Gene Simmons is right now, so we might as well yeah. give the offer to him. <laughs> he needs well, allies. Gene, he needs four Gene nerds did, on the internet. Gene Gene did get nailed with two uh, harassment um, accusations, you know, recently. But they yeah, they weren't uh, they weren't super severe, so you didn't hear anything about them. But fair enough. Not, Screw Gene not Simmons. Even, anyway. Not even rock stars are immune to that. No one's immune to harassment, but nah. enough about Gene Simmons for today. Lego, what have you been up to, dude? No, nothing much. Just surviving the university circuit as usual. No, not university. Same old um, pre-university stuff. Going to write exams in December. So, nothing other than that. I binge-watched The Punisher. That was awesome. Pretty brutal. Damn, Netflix. Oh, the, oh God. They, that came out? Jesus Christ. I'm so behind on Netflix shows. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I don't know what to call it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's it's not Daredevil, but 
I enjoyed the hell out of it. It was awesome for me. And there's a new Star Trek. You've heard of that one? Like, yeah. Discovery. I've heard mixed I've heard mixed reviews about the new Star Trek. Yeah, I, but I haven't I, seen any of it. I enjoyed it like I would enjoy a Star Wars movie, so I'm not sure it's the same good old sci-fi hard hardish sci-fi that it used to be. I don't know. I mean, I, mean, so, I find I, I find yeah. Doctor Who more technical. I don't know. Doctor Who is very much it's a lot more pure sci-fi. Cuz like if we is it like the new uh, Star Trek movies kind of? Yes, I think they've taken their direction from that, flashier, more action, which I am okay with, but I'm just like, I'm not going to find any Picard or... No, not Picard. Who's the bold guy? Damn it, I'm bad with Star Trek. Bold guy is Picard. Oh, yeah. Picard. Picard, yeah. Yeah. Picard. I'm not going to find any Picard here, so... Yeah. Because, like, I mean, I get it. Because, like, a lot of science fiction nowadays isn't, like, pure science fiction as isn't much, like, science fiction adventure. You know what I mean? (laughs) Exactly in the age when you have the computer graphics to back it up. But anyway, <laughs> people yeah. like action nowadays, and I, I assume it's going to come back around at some point. But you know, yeah, make I'm a remake surprised. of Logan's Run. Oh, yeah. Wait, no, Logan. Don't do that. <laughs> no, that was that was my week basically. Um, got invited to a Thanksgiving, stuffed my face. That was fun. It's always nice when there's Americans in Germany. So. Oh, nice. Um, so you got to be with some genuine Americans on Thanksgiving then. Uh, yep. One from South Carolina, one from from Wisconsin, one from, what was that other one? San Francisco. Ooh, she was That's hot. all over the fucking place. She Jesus. No, that's a... You have to t- What did they make? Did they do like the full turkey and dress- there were, there dressing? Were, there were two turkeys. All I know is that the meat was like, it was like meat juice, which sounds disgusting in words, but I mean, it was just what? so succulent, man. Oh, right. Just, okay, okay. The turkey was just so succulent. It had no bones in it. How is that possible? God, I'm hungry just thinking about it. Because it was so good. Bone turkey? I guess. I don't know. No, My favorite cook- part of turkey is always the leg, so I always like the big bone and on. <laughs> you freaking caveman. Thanks for that. No, no one made a bone joke there. I'm appreciated. I don't care if I like, look like a caveman or a viking or what, or a dude at a rent fair. It doesn't matter. It's delicious. It's no, it's all right. That, it's that's, why, that's why I prefer bone-in wings instead of boneless because you yeah. get a little bit of like – you get something involved in there. You know, boneless wings for babies. They're yeah, just chicken could... nuggets. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just want – you want proper – you want wings to have the bones and shit. When when there's a bone, you know it's real. It's not just whatever you glued together, right? <laughs> That's you know, true. It's, it's not it's McDonald's. Not, not that I don't fucking love them, but you know it's not just the leftover. It's something, you know, you can hold in your hand. Yeah. It's well, genuine chicken meat or turkey or whatever you're eating. Um, Yeah, well, it's been my Thanksgiving that I had. I had a turkey sandwich. That's about as festive no, as I got. Oh, whoa, whoa. Is that like a crime or something? No. no, I don't know. Um, That's, you know, I was at work. Um, yeah, but in terms of my week that was, it was cool. I mean, I got, just like you, Corin, I got a fair bit of writing done. I've um, done some rescripting and rewriting, so that was enjoyable. I've actually started working on a secret project as well that you guys won't see for many, many months. Yeah, um, new chapter! No, heavy, heavy rain. Not heavier that rain. No, that's what I was writing. Heavier rain. That's what I've been <laughs> writing on. Heavy rain has been... I've been writing, but the secret project is something for the channel. Um, but you won't so see it for ages. So it's something that we'll never see ever. Ho-ho! Oh, Listen, so you excited. doughty boy over there. That ain't what's happening. It's oh, going to be I'll something. Wait for those next season impressions, I guess. We'll make oh. calls after the episode, and then we'll know for sure if it's coming or not. Wait, Motherfucker. Right. Stop right, Stop right now. Stop right now. He's talking about first impressions. If you would like to go over to Mangaraders.com and check the forum thread and go over to no, Four I Season videos. Impressions by Manimal, you will no. see. Yeah, Four Season. Last, for the last few seasons, you're like, I'm going to make videos on the channel for first impressions. But I never said when. <laughs> This is oh, an important fair. thing. Oh, I have I never can't. said when. And hey, guys. here is my first impression for One Punch Man. It's a manga by yeah. one. I know a lot of people haven't heard of it yet. Exactly. But it's going to be coming yeah, out right. um, two years right. ago, and I'm really excited <laughs> for it. Exactly so let funny. me tell you something about this Attack on Titan, guys. So basically, it's all about these big, giant, zombie-like creatures, but they're not oh. zombies. They're what? just big, dickless dudes 
So we're going to eat people. <laughs> anyway. With suspiciously realistic faces. Yeah. So I have been working on some secret shit. So, you know, but I've still had time to watch some anime. Caught up with uh, more Black Clover. Because another two volumes came out. So I've managed to read them. Uh, okay. Um, how is it doing? Black Clover is... The manga's fine. The manga oh, the is anime, fine. I mean the manga. Oh, know. the anime. Okay. okay, we'll get onto the anime in the fall season. We'll get on the anime. The manga's doing great. And it's... It's doing a lot better. I'll say that. Black Clover yeah. and My Hero really Academia like are both awesome. Um, really enjoying those mangas, so that's my shonen fix right there. Um, what else did we do? What else? There was something that I was going to talk about. Other than that, just sort of... I mentioned last week, Call of Duty has infected my life, and now I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty World War II. It's fun. Have you dodged the loot boxes? Yeah, I haven't paid for anything though. Um, you do get loot boxes as like a reward, like a supply drop, and it's I don't know what they do. It's just sort of like you've unlocked a grip for this weapon you don't have. Oh, Enjoy. But it, wait, is that how the system works? Do you do you get like attachments for your weapons, or do you get them in loot boxes? They you, give you you they can unlock... break down important stuff, and they give you nickels and dimes, can... which are shit. Are you... No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Lego's lo- Lego is not saying the truth there. I should have just said lying. I don't know why. <laughs> He's not saying the truth. No, he um... is bending the reality of the situation at hand. <laughs> no, what it is is you can unlock. Uh, your attachments as normal as you always did. You level up your weapon, you unlock attachments. Yeah. However, in supply drops, you'll be able to unlock extra attachments, whether these are for weapons that you've not unlocked yet or for weapons that you cannot unlock and you only physically purchase. That's it. You have to complete the entire set. So there's tags, there's uniforms, and all kinds of shit. And you can buy Just all that once you've bought the entire system. set. It it's done. Perfect. It's it's a fun game, but I everything already... was perfect in Black Ops. Yeah, I well, like this is the my Black thing Ops on games is I bought a full price game online season passes. I'll if you give me good value for money and loads of extra content, I don't mind buying that. I'll I'll stretch for a, for a season pass for a game yeah, that I'm going to be playing over the year. All all the Call of Duty season passes is maps you'll play on for a couple months and then never yeah. again. If it's zombie shit and stuff like that, I'm down. Pardon me. But I will not pay for loot boxes. I'm not going to pay for shit that should be in the game. Like you say, yeah. I'm totally on board there. But anyway, that's by the bye. Um, other that's than that, by the bye. I think I've paid for loot boxes once, and I was playing Overwatch, and it was, I think it was last Christmas's, like, big Christmas skin thing, and I guys got drunk and bought, like, yeah. 50 bucks of loot boxes. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> 50 bucks. 50 yeah. bucks. Wait, and I didn't this. get the skin I wanted to, and I haven't bought any boxes since. Do you know what? Do no, if you Holy crap, if you're gonna bad. stretch, like I'm not opposed to paying a couple extra quid for like a character or something that you want to unlock, and you know you're gonna get your money's worth out of it, and you're gonna enjoy what that content is. What I don't like is where it's just potluck, and it's like realistically you're gonna have to buy a dozen, two dozen, fifty. You're gonna have to mm-hmm. regularly buy to keep up and play the game, like mo- you yeah. know the mobile platform. It, it, which it, I don't agree it's with. different when it's like pay to play and just yeah it's yeah. like it's fine i don't care in like overwatch because it's like pay to look Close cooler magic. that's fine yeah aesthetic, it's purely aesthetic I, I still don't like loot boxes i'd like to get rid of them if we can but Which i don't see apparently it happening. <laughs> well it's, it's, apparently sir is it canada that's trying to outlaw them or is it a state that's trying to uh hawaii at the moment belgium is looking hawaii. into it australia too rumors say they, yeah i heard about australia trying to ban them because it, it is bullshit, basically. Good eye, mate. Right, next awesome. order in the court. I've got Battlefronts 2 on the horizon. I want to play as fucking Darth Vader. And I've got to spend 4,000 hours or some fucking dingo dollars on that shit. You can fuck that dollars. right off. I don't know. Dingo dollars. Dingo dollars. Anyway. Dingo dollars. <laughs> that's Hell real yeah. Australian currency there. It's dingo dollars. you got to get... Oh, my goodness. That's about 25 dingo dollars just to get me hands on... Fucking big doll feeder with its breathing. Dingo doll is doing great in the economy right now. I think I think Corin wins this accent battle. Wanna be Sif Kangaroo? Well, no Dingo shit. Dingo doll is worth two point five American currency. <laughs> that that one plays a Darth Vader, right? Yeah. No, was it? I can't remember. I know they've scra- temporarily suspended their transactions, Battlefront Two. 
Um, I don't know what's going on with Battlefront 2 anymore. I'm putting off buying the game until this shit blows over. Because I just want to play the single player anyways, to be honest. I Mostly. Am, I'm not buying large for the same reason. And I think they've done too little too late personally. <laughs> not a single person I know has purchased the game as of yet due oh, to a lot of the S-bomb. bullshit that surrounded like, it. So S-bomb. Yeah, I, I don't want to buy it because of the bullshit. But as you know, I fucking love Star Wars. And it has a single player campaign and I can't pass it up. But I'm I'm definitely going to wait until they figure their fucking shit out. Hey, um, you know, Boxing Day sales or Black Friday sales. You never know. You might find yeah. some shit. I, I'm waiting for it to go on sale on the PlayStation Store. Wait, just for reference, when is Star Wars coming out so that I can become a caveman and never open my internet again? December the 14th movie? in the UK, so I'm not sure. Yeah, it, I think it's probably mid-December. It's what's going yeah. on. 14th uh, in the UK, so I'm guessing the 14th, 13th in the America. I should think Germany so. Germany probably 50. You guys 60. got tickets? No, no I, I did. did. I, I already got did. tickets. I'm going to Seriously? find, like... I'm going to, like, find, like, the latest showing on probably the first weekend it comes out because not many people will be in it for that. Yeah. Of course, Fuck I know man. last year when Rogue One came out, there was a fucking ice storm and I would made uh, Nergo with me, so. Oh, yeah. You, you, <laughs> I remember. I remember. That, you I remember vlogged that. a little bit of that. Nergo, I know you're listening. Uh, we're going to Star Wars. I don't care what the weather is. <laughs> you do need to go because it's a tradition on the 12 days of Christmas episodes, which will be coming out in a couple of weeks, which is fucking insane. It um, is. We will be doing a Star Wars one. So you guys have to cover so, Star Wars. Yep, got to watch Star Wars. I'll, I'll, Star Wars is the one film franchise I will see by myself if I goddamn have to. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't like being in a theater by myself. It's weird. I did it once to see Pacific Rim as an experiment because I've never done it before. And it was awkward. I did it for I Am Legend, and it was it was okay. I was a bit oh, emotional. And dog died. You're just going to see a film. Ah, dog died in I Am Legend. I just mm, that's sorry. Moving on, moving uh, on, moving underrated on. Underrated film. On. Let's go on. Move on. Yeah, let's go. That's all my week. Other than that, I've been spent. I spent to debate to most of the day. Couldn't speak then. Um, learning all about the wonderful world of Elsa Gate. Have you guys heard about this? Uh, it's Adpocalypse oh, Round just... Two Elsa on YouTube. Gate? I've... Yeah, that's 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 that some doesn't shit. Exist. Okay, that's... so in a nutshell, let me try it because I watched loads of different videos on it and I oh, read loads yeah. of different comments and it was all confusing mess that's happening is right Elsa now. The Ice Princess thing. Yeah, she's from Frozen. So what it is, in a nutshell, is for a while now you've probably noticed these Fro Elsa and Spider Man weird videos that are aimed at kids, but are oddly, you know, they feature needles in the thumbnail. There's like I'm looking, I'm looking at it. A... Video right now that is named hashtag ElsaGate hyphen pedophiles ruining kid channels. Uh, yeah, there is a picture of Elsa kissing Spider Man. Yeah, what? for some reason Elsa. So this has been going on for like a year, maybe more. Um, I first learned about it from H3H3 H3 in his videos, and then yeah. I dubs no, H- content cops as well. H3 pretty much introduced everybody yeah. to this. Yeah, and basically they target these things at kids, and the the beginning of this initially was these live action ones of spider-man elsa joker and the live action they did weird comedic sketches but then there was also as i say oddly adult material so there was one where like elsa was whipping them or something like in their pants and something to do with needles there was all these weird (laughs) things which are slightly creepy fetishes but that's not even the just of it there's the animations that's the beginning. That's where it all stemmed from. From there, yeah. where we are today, there is literally thousands of these channels which do this. Um, and obviously, it's aimed at YouTube kids. And they're taking advantage of the algorithm by putting in... You'll see a lot of the titles tend to be gibberish. They're not perfect English. They've got keywords. They're, they're very, um, they're very uh, focused on those keywords and the algorithms and cheating them. So say a kid is watching nursery rhymes, you know, and you just leave the tablet with the kid for 20 minutes and it just auto plays video after video one of these may come up for the kid and it's gotten to the point where there's if you go and watch h3's podcast with post malone i think it's the most recent one or the one before uh they, that's the one where they talked about it yeah yeah this is the one where they were talking about it and they were showing great examples of it uh, and oh it's, man there's, i say great there's really creepy stuff here it's fucked up in a word and the the conspiracy like the media has brought attention to it. Mainstream media, journalists, uh, newspaper outlets, news networks are reporting on this and talking about all these 
kid fr- supposedly kid friendly content with these very dark and disturbing undertones. Loads of backers of of um, just abandon ship from YouTube, prompting them to get up off their asses and do something about this. Good. Not saying that YouTube is, you know, it's impossible for them to stop every content just to how the sheer volume of videos, it's got to be done by an algorithm and, you know. Right. It's Again, it's, it's clever bastards finding a way to play the algorithm. Yeah. But these videos have millions of views, some of them. Um, Ridiculous one that, amounts. Yeah. One that H3 pointed out was 6.2 million in two weeks. That's it's a crazy, huge amount. Crazy shit. Are you serious? That's that a is, lot. That is not that getting H3 viewed. Video. Damn. And that, that video would not get viewed without being pushed by YouTube. It would yeah. not be there. It, no Wait a minute. That, oh, that is nasty. So the nefarious some, part of this. What's your shit going on here? The, um, the nefarious thing to this is that plenty of you people sh- on Reddit, and I'm sure other places, 4chan, and all that kind of stuff, there's internet is, rumors are abound on the internet that this is actually a concerted effort and a smuggle like a clever front for pedophilic activity certain evidence pedophilic. Is, i don't know how to put it pedophilic pedophilic pedophilia, pedophilia. pedophilia. um there's pedophilia. people it's so funny how you say it those who like lowlies um they were coming for you motherfuckers um we should probably change the title of last episode from beer drinking lowlies i feel like there's going to be undue attention that's, on that no one. that's different lollies are fake this is real shit and this is that's yeah, still, yeah. I mean, anyway, that's still kind of concept. fucked up yeah yeah not that's... Gonna, that's not the that's not what this episode's yeah. about i, I, I didn't don't want to talk about this or yeah. even think well, about this ever again it's topical, it's just, so. i'm looking at some of these like these aren't like the actual videos of elsa stuff but it's like um uh, reactions to yeah and a lot of these are all it's conspiracy videos about MK Ultra and the CIA and the Illuminati. This is this is the thing. Now, anything That's that gains goes. anything that gains traction, the nefarious side of it is the rumors that people are saying it's it's all a front for a ring of pedophiles or you know child sex slave trafficking and all this sort of thing is going off and people are talking about this. People have viewed the comments and a lot. I mean, some of the comments off. Well, most of the comments on there, to be honest, are fucked up. It's not kids' I mean, comments. We it's have adults. fucked up comments. Let's be honest. Yeah. Everyone does if you're on YouTube, but yeah, but I... these are like gibberish comments that people think are like code. Yeah, the the main oh, ones that are standing out, other than the creepy adults who are clearly commenting sexual undertones on things, which is <laughs> fucking weird, is the gibberish ones where someone's found. If you put it into like one of the comments is if you put it into a Thai simulator, like the Thai. Uh, language you put it into there so you can type these letters and translate them from a US keyboard into Thai letters and then translate it back it gives a message or if you get rid of the gibberish there is a, a message in there so that's the the conspiracy you know hot take on it at the moment which hopefully is not true because I'd like I, to think that there wasn't a giant pedophile ring on YouTube I mean there, po- there probably is a pedophile ring somewhere on YouTube, but I don't think this is it. <laughs> I don't. Know. I'm just I glad. Know. I'm just happy. I'm glad that, cause as I say, I have known about this, you know, for a while. Uh, H3 has brought it to attention. Idubs did a content cop on these toy channels and stuff, and he mentioned these in a second one. So these are these have been in in the. Not the mainstream, but certainly been in the wider circle of people who watch yeah. YouTube well, for the it last year or two. It was different with H3 because those were just live action videos where they were just, it was pretty clear their intentions yeah. just to cheat the system. So either way, they're, they're not appropriate for kids. Glad that there's finally been some action on them. But the downside to that is obviously the ad, um, the advertisers have, a lot of them have jumped ship. As I say, it's, it's Adpocalypse Part 2. Um, they pulled their adverts from YouTube in a panic. This is going to affect everyone on YouTube, not us, because we is don't. This is the reason I've seen life. the same advertisement like fifteen times in a row. Probably They're running out of options. Okay. Um, yeah, some big, shit. some big um, advertising yeah, sponsors pulled out. So. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I'm just, I just feel like, like this is less reasonable than Pizzagate was and let's come on Oy. Pizzagate was fucking bonkers mm-hmm. but like this is just this is just people being dicks on the internet and people are freaking out about it 
I don't know. Because it's the this most is... nonsensical <laughs> I mean, thing in the world. But it's just, it's that's, way... trolls. that's the thing, though. It's it, I think it goes too deep to be simple trolling, though. Is it, though? Wait Think till about I will just though. say, yeah, I will just say, wait till you see. Maybe the craziest theories I don't think are true. I don't think there's like a nefarious giant pedophile ring operating through these videos. But these videos, some of them are very, very inappropriate, and and it's very weird that it's aimed towards children. There's one that hate like on the. I'll send you the Post Malone and H3 clip. I, please um, don't. And I, one of them, I don't know anything they don't, more about this They don't watch either. it, but some of them are like Elsa for slavery in a strip club, and that's the title of the fucking thing. Yeah. And it's on YouTube Kids for Kids. It's, my my hope is with this is that we're just we're gonna get better YouTube kids basically at the end of it. Just just oh, do it ultimately, anyway. won't we? If don't we, let, we don't really, let little if kids think watch about YouTube. It. Yeah, more that, Ruby Rubes, I mean, yeah, more that, that is, If if you kids. are if you're a parent and you're listening to us, don't just let your kids watch YouTube unsupervised. Yeah. <laughs> Give them a puzzle or something. I, I don't know, man. If you are a parent and listening, we will now release a kid-friendly podcast called The uh, Manga Raiders Lappy Hour. And Lappy we will Hour. not mention alcohol. We will not mention violence. We will only it's talk about kid-friendly show, cartoons. But only non-offensive words will be not bleeped out. So <laughs> it's like 30 seconds long. It'll be great. They won't know the yeah. difference. Oh, yeah. That was a bit of a tangent. Tied, really. <laughs> Sorry, I no, went I guess, off on that. I mean, I guess it's very topical. It's a topical thing. I, I guess this is our news segment now. It's uh, because. Sorry, I was, uh, yeah, I was just saying. I, I bought it up just because purely I've been reading and listening about it all day, yeah. so it's just very I, front of mind. The first day I heard about it, I read it, and then I was like, I, I stop. It, it makes me feel sick. This stuff, and I hate feeling that way. But um. Someone did make a point that some of these, like, they're, you know, like, cartoon porn parody, like, silly things, right, mm-hmm, on new, mm-hmm. on new grounds and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, just silly things that you laugh at when you're, like, 12 or whatever, you know. Someone makes yeah. points that they could be something like that, but, ah, I don't know. They look, it's I mean, it's shady they look like... business. May, we'll learn more as as more attention's on it. Obviously, they'll get to the bottom of it. So, but yeah, we are on the news segment, so I'll hit you with some quick ones right about now. Please make me feel better. Okay, how about this one? Did you watch Gakko Gakuen last year? School Life? No. Did you watch Kakegori this year? Yeah, you did. I know I did. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> I watched both of them last year, uh, last year and this year. Well, get ready for some live action adaptations of yes, them both. Yes, my favorite yeah. noise, news of the day of the day, and everyone shout on it. Why do you guys hate this amazing news? Take it live away. Live action. So <laughs> Gaku Gakuen is getting a film next year. Oh no, it could Gaku. land its. The problem is the main appeal of of um, School Live. I think it was called. Can't remember now. Yeah, School Live. I think it was yeah. the English. The main appeal of of it, or the interesting bit of it, was they were very Moe characters. The style was very Moe esque, um, but they were in a post apocalyptic zombie world. Like it became very gritty because you were seeing life. The main character was so traumatized by his fall that they'd then gone into like uh, not amnesia, but they were in denial and they were hallucinating that the school was okay. So they were still seeing things, and they were like, yeah, Moe, oh yeah, all the classmates are in there, and they were like imagining that the classmates are there, and the school was fine, it wasn't in disrepair. And that was the whole point, you're seeing this very nice, you know, Moe-esque world through their eyes, when really it was a gritty thing. You can't, you could replicate that in live action, but not as well. Like, I think it lent itself really well to anime, because of that style. Um, yeah, but the only thing is, I think it's stupid because live action is such a trigger word now that anytime anyone hears live action, they're just like, "Oh my god, it's uh," you know, because they think yeah. uh, you're freaking Death Note and you're Dragon Ball Z. But meanwhile, films like this have been made all the time. There's always been movies like this, and no one's cared until recently. And then suddenly, it's like, how can they do that? But no one cared before, and their films, and when they're released, nobody cares about them after. I, yeah, that one's interesting to me because the reason it stood out is because of the aforementioned reasons. I don't know how they would do it, but then I guess you could say that about a lot of them. The Kakigori one is not a film, that is a TV series. I would be tempted to watch that because that one 
could lend itself to oh, hey, how how oh those faces in real Other, life. Yeah, I was going to say the only thing they can't replicate is those glorious facial expressions. Um, I will be very <laughs> sad that they don't do that unless they CG the fuck out of them, okay. which I'll not be opposed to. So they've got you got them to look forward to, but. If I can locate that category, I would be interested in seeing that, just to see how it is. Because it could be fun. Could be fun. Could be a good time. And the only other news story that I had, um, it's a quick news, what can I say, it's light news. Um, net neutrality. No, I'm joking. Oh, um, Jesus. Well, that would be another segment. Yeah. <laughs> that would be another segment entirely. Um, the, um, Wait, you did introduce the other live action that is awesome. Come on. Which one? Which one? You bastard, Mob Psycho 100. Oh, God, yes, 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 yes. That's the thing. I think we spoke about it a few weeks ago. Mob Psycho, Uh, yeah, Netflix is doing a live action. Again, there's live action for everything. There's a freaking live action of Nana Takoru, too. Is there a live action of Love Live yet? Because I feel like that could work. (laughs) No, there's just the real uh, voice actresses who do shows and radio shows and all kinds of events. Oh, okay. They do them as themselves, but they still wear the uniforms and everything. That's kind of cool. Mind you, yeah. bang was a bang dream kind of like that, and that dream. Was, but again, uh, they they the uh, uh, seiyus play themselves, you know. So they separate the character in them. They're not just like, "Hi, I'm Daya," you know. Yeah, like, she doesn't have a mole in real life. No, no, zero have. out of ten, fake shit. Unbelievable. <laughs> Can't wait to see. The um, the only other news story that I had that isn't well, I thought it was news because I saw it on Twitter. And then realized that all the articles are several months old, but I'm pretty certain we didn't bring it up, so I'll just make a note of it now. Um, do you know how they have made cafes in Japan? Yes, my well, dream. Well, back in March or February, they successfully crowdfunded the very first made gym <laughs> you oh, could live with. Yes. It was a made cafe, but a no, gym. So I you could live with. Japan, man, Japan. Fit- Fitness is some kind of new trend in Japan because we have Deadlift Lolita, who surprisingly enough have played shows in America recently. <laughs> of course, they they're over. We love them, so surely. They're in, they're in like... How does how does Japan work in this? Like they have such insane entertainment, but but I know them as worker bees who don't even rest a single second of the day. How does that work? Well, somebody has to think about these things. That's how. Um, like, hey, I got I these mean, crazy you, ideas I've been thinking about and working all day. You can work crazy and still process entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, but how? What time does a salary man have to go to like a I think, cafe? I think it's more. I mean, it's there's not more like of a clear division there. I think they still get weekends. I think have it. If I hazard a guess, I think these more appeal to the guys who aren't full time salary men. <laughs> those who are so good. <laughs> that kind yeah maybe maybe i'm not saying obviously it's even it's all black and white in japan but you know as a guess but yeah it's a made made gym you can get spotted by a lovely maid um they can you know hold your dumbbells for you they can you know spot you count your reps hold your water bottle wipe you down oh, did yeah, we already cool make up. the joke about the old internet picture of do you even list gojo jituma no, we have not. <laughs> what, if I can find that, yep. Do you even look? Just two buff maids. Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking, if I could have two buff maids helping me work out, I'd get so much... I'd be so <laughs> fit. I would uh, I would love that. If, 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 you, um, if you come in, or you walk past it, and they just go, Do you even lift Sammer? And then I'd be like, Yeah, I lift Salmon. I lift two salmons. I'm back, a Canadian back on the, wilderness back on the man. the docks, unloading crates, crates five days a week. Oh, I will lift your omelets and here, here in whatever the New, fuck New else Jersey, again, my cafe. The docks. I, what I've if said it before? I've said it again. I love the kind of girl who can kick my ass. <laughs> what if it's like Blender, <laughs> and you can choose the type? So you've got a really moe kind of personal coach, oh, and all your son. Just wait till we get the new episode of Blend S. One Imagine more. a Yandera, the Yandera uh, fitness coach, and she like oh, chokes yeah. you with the barbell for a bit, and then it's, um, like, it's okay. Yeah, that, I only wanted you to get fitter. Because then you'll die. I mean, she just for a bit. Just for a little bit. <laughs> just for a bit, you want to be choked? I don't just, feel like it's everyone's saying, everything. If you could go into any gym and request your per- the kind of personal trainer you want. I gotcha, I gotcha. You want the Yandera. I mean, Lego, I'm sure you agree with this. You would be... You would be very motivated to work out, definitely. 
Well, yeah, you know? it's either complete that set or you're Wait. getting choked out. <laughs> that's, I mean, yeah, that's motivation. So getting stabbed in the appendix, but yeah. So okay. For every time you fail to do a full set, you have to fight them until you can are allowed to do it again. Oh, yeah. I mean, just think about that. That's a workout in itself, physical combat. A workout in pain. God, there's something horrifying about seeing muscles on these... <laughs> oh, God, one of these pictures. You don't even know what to say. Something horrible on, on these 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 Are they creatures. So, were they supposed to be made? God, what? How yeah. many packs is that? One, two, three. How many packs? God, that's just, an just, pack. No, it's just they have muscles. They have muscles. They have breasts, a lot of packs. Muscles that shouldn't be there. I know. It's anime just, style. Just like Cannon's abs. Does so Cannon have abs? Cannon that does not have abs in the show, but people like to draw her with abs because she should have abs. You know, it, it would make sense, but she doesn't. That is horrific. Again, like I said, they need to make an idol show where the girls just have abs and they just don't even talk about it. They just, they're rippling. Give your anime girls abs. This like is I why said, the second intro to Attack on Titan is always the best. We yes, got those hot Mikasa abs. Like I said, idols have abs, but they just don't want to acknowledge <laughs> it because they have to keep them cute. You what can make, you can make like abs adorable. <laughs> No, it's just Look, a, it's abs, a abs are sexy interest. on everyone. Doesn't matter if you're male or female, ads are sexy. Be fit. Ha- hashtag Taibo. So the new story I have is one we've heard about already, I think, but we haven't touched on the podcast because it happened right after we recorded the last episode. Uh, Rurouni Kenshin creator Nobuhiro Watsuki charged with child pornography possession. Mm. Sorry we're talking about child porn twice in one episode. Oh, great. It's the, one of them times. This is shows. just what we need on it's, this episode. It's a big it's piece of anime news. Let's let's be honest. Yeah. I mean, I guess so, but with something like this, it's a little different because it's not a lolly manga, so it it's it's mark on no, the actual, actual work. It was so, actual No, child no, 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 no. I'm talking about the the work itself. It's mark on the work is like I'd it's, say it's it's not like he was drawing weird porn stuff to begin with. That yeah, that's no. what I'm relating it to. Obviously, like it, it's it's fucked and it's good he got charged. I shit. I get what you mean, and I was I was just initially confused because we have spoke about it, but it was on another episode and it wasn't on Happy Hour. It's on an upcoming episode, the Etchy episode. In we touched on this pass. briefly. <laughs> um. And I, I get what you're saying, Manimal. You're saying that now, retroactively, people who have enjoyed Roroni Kenshin, um, can they... It's that thing. If Can you still enjoy a, a song or a film or a book or a piece of art that someone has made if its creator is not a very nice person, to put there, it like? I mean, you... there's a few people I can name off the bat that are currently hiding out in Europe and still making films after committing pedophilia. Yeah. Seriously? No, that doesn't happen. Yeah. But, yeah. You know. But like Serbian film. The the way I look at it is I wouldn't like buy anything he makes after this point if he ever gets that chance, you know what I mean? Uh probably not. Yeah. But like I mean, this, is like, this is made... almost like Akira Toriyama. Not 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 quite, but I mean Kenshin was a childhood anime, man. It's like um, Oda. Oda was his assistant. Yeah, Oda was his assistant. Like Roni Kenshin made a massive impact on my childhood and like the way I think about storytelling and plot structure, even. Mm-hmm. And I, but, I fucking love the anime, and it's not influenced by this kind of thing. And it, but I, I'd be interested to know at what point did he get into child pornography? I guess it's a weird yeah. way to say that, but like. Was it oh, being practiced at this point? I mean, is there something developed later in life? Because you don't... I don't think I could go back and watch Rony Kenshin again and like, see that angle so... of it, you know what yeah, I mean? But, but see, this... at the same time, again, it's not like he's doing a lolly work or anything that relates to that. So the work itself stands as the work itself detached from the author, especially in the anime format. Mm-hmm. Is you it going to overshadow it? No. When you go back and watch Ron Kenshin, are you going to be thinking... Well, you'll think about it for a this. while. It's different... If it was a musician, that's different because they are upfront with themselves instead of the author. Because the author is the work, and you don't always necessarily remember the author in some cases. Okay. 
Yeah. But with like, with a musician, if it's someone like freaking Gary Glitter, then you know that's different. I mean, I I fully endorse the idea of the death of the author idea. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So like, he's made it. It's done. It's out there. And I I I don't want to say I watched it recently, but I watched it later on in high school. So it's not like a fade faint childhood memory. I have a lot more specific memories of it to draw upon. And like all the characters in that show are adults. I think there's a couple kids, but they're not like important. They show up in a couple episodes basically and that's yeah. it. So I think I could probably watch Ronan Kenshin and divorce myself from the idea that the guy who made it happened to be a pedophile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and again, with stuff like this, I think when it's something new and fresh in your head, it's different. Where if you're looking at an old work and then you happen to realize something like that that happened before you were born, there's a different it, yeah. it hits it hits you differently, you know? It's bad either like, way. Um, uh, like I don't endorse it, obviously. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah I don't yeah, think yeah. even if I wanted to, I would pay for a Ronin Kenshin manga nowadays, let's say, because I don't know how the money situation works out because I don't think he should be able to profit anymore. Well, if he's in jail, it's not where you're going to work out. I mean, you can still profit in jail. They don't like close your bank accounts. I don't know how it works out, but like, honestly, I, in in my humble opinion, if you're you're a pedophile, you should get shut the fuck down right then and there and possibly sell. But ah, hard to think. Yeah, yeah, it's a crazy situation, definitely, but. I think with a work like that, there's a greater separation. Okay. Although I do get the reaction, definitely. Of course. Um, There's got to be, I mean, you know, there's a reaction, of course. And I'd I'd be worried if there was one guy going out there who's like, yeah, go, man, watch those kids. But damn, he made such a... He made such a morally upright character, man. Like none of that leaked into into his. I don't, it won't, no, will it? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I don't think like if some some people can be fucked up. Like it's with serial killers and stuff in it. Like you know they can lead a double life and they can not let it leak into their work and there could be no hints or anything like that. I mean, um, yeah, let's not get too deep into serial killer, yeah, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. BTK, for instance, who's close to my heart because he was in Wichita and I grew up right fucking next to that city, literally physically close to my heart. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, lived to what other people would say a completely normal life, but that's because mm-hmm. he was a psychopath. I don't know if this dude's a psychopath BTK? or not. It's, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah let's, we'll let's get into BTK a different time. Not no, exactly. Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Family friendly material. I think the closest. Yeah, I said in the episode I touched on it um, with that because obviously we discuss it a bit more in that. But um, the closest I can equate it to is the Wrestle Chris Benoit, one of my favorites growing up, and then he went ahead and murdered his wife and child. And um, had like they had that whole like uh, memorial. WWE act. Yeah. Went after they learned about it, but they couldn't stop because they learned about it in the middle of it. That's still one of my favorite wrestling stories. Yeah, they. Chris um, Benoit. They heard he died. Actually, erased that from the memory until I remembered. They they knew he died, um, but they didn't know it was a murder. So they'd started the memorial show. They'd cancelled everything they were going to do. They just did a memorial. Um, It's really interesting going back. Funny enough, I watched um, some of the clips from that recently. And it's interesting to see William Regals, who is, he physically lived the closest out of all of them to Chris Benoit. He lives about a mile away or something. Um, And his, if you go back and watch his interview, his is markedly different to everyone else's. And he doesn't want to say how great a guy he is. He doesn't mention anything. Like, everyone's like, he's a really cool guy, blah, blah, blah. They were really praising him as a person. His... He says nothing about his character, which is very weird considering he is a close friend, uh, both physically and location of where he lived, and oh, wow. you know, as friends. Mm-hmm. Very interesting, that one. It's, I mean, uh, you know, this is just speculation, obviously. You know, we don't know. But that's how I equated it. Um, I loved Chris Benoit. I thought he was one of the greatest wrestlers at the time. Um, now I struggle to watch a match with men. I really well, do struggle to watch a match. Yeah. It overshadows his work. I, I know it. I do. He had a terrible, like, brain tumor thing going on, so it's... Those chair oh, shots do something to you. It, it, I'm yeah, not going to argue. It was the same thing with... I, I, you guys might not know it as well, but back in the 70s, there was... A, I think it was Texas A&M. There was a guy who was, like, an ex-Marine, climbed up to the... the bell tower or something with a sniper rifle, started shooting people. 
And like a week before that, he was like, people need to put me into a mental asylum because I'm going to do something bad. And they're like, you're going to be oh, yeah. fine because they didn't believe him. And it turns out yeah. he had this massive brain tumor that was smushing the front of his brain. Because, uh... Shit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> It's it's not good. Like you can't divorce his actions, and you can't say he was like a great person for that. But yeah, like he obviously wasn't doing well because his he he was brain damaged. Yeah, but that something like that the person is up front the whole time, like an actor or something. Yeah, you know, so it's harder because you have more of a connection to the person as a person rather than the person as their works. Like, did you guys even know what this dude looked like before? You know. Yeah, it, it's hard. Who, the author? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know. No, I, I, did, I didn't know anything about... You never watched Ruin Kenshin. No. Oh, Jesus. Uh, well, again, like, you don't really even know the author, so there's a better, like, the whole reality fiction separation here is easier in this case than if it was a wrestler or something like that whose persona and face is well, up front. And I, it, I, I think I, it depends as well as on, like, the author, because, like... You can certainly name authors out there, and man, well, you could probably name musicians that you can see a lot of them go into their music or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like, if we were to talk about Bleach, we could say, oh, yeah, of course Tide Kube made this. It's, it has Tide Kube written all over it. Mm-hmm. Gene Simmons wrote a song called Christine 16. You know, oh. there were a lot of songs back in the day about sixteen-year-olds. Oh, sweet sixteen! There's a whole bunch of shit, Chuck Berry songs and everything. Yeah, uh, although even I, mean, uh, I think that it, I don't know what at what point the age of consent moved from sixteen to eighteen. Well, it's because it's a good, it's a good rhyme. It's a good. It's rhyme. still uh, last time I checked, the age of consent is still sixteen in Kansas. Actually, who could forget yeah. the the very first line on the very first Beatles album? Well, she was just seventeen, and you know what I mean. You know, oh, good old sixties, eh? Good old when Paul could... McCartney. Free love, anyway. drugs everywhere. Let's get out of the news. Sorry for the most depressing episode of the year. Lego has no, had to right. step we're out. Having, we're having good talk. Lego has had to step out. Um, <laughs> fortunately, we've lost Lego, but we're glad that he was here all the same. So he will be back with us even more because we promise December it's going to be. A very fun and festive time. It's all gravy. Now, let's move on to the fall season, as always. All let's right. talk about dem anime shows. Yeah, I so... haven't watched shit. Yeah, I That's will, understandable. I will, I will do my thing. <laughs> but, uh, so we're going to talk about the greater Finland and why they should take Karelia back. No, okay. So Love, Life, Sunshine, Episode 8 was... It was it's getting back on track. It was okay. Yeah. They went to like this snowy place, but they're still wearing their skirts with no leggings. But they had fuzzy boots, so apparently that's comfortable and warm. Well, yeah. In the, the cold. Feet are cold. The thighs are fine. Don't, I still don't understand how leggings keep somebody warm since they're like a micron thick. But unless they have leg warmers, they go back to the eighties. But I, yeah, uh, love leg warmers. Great look. But, oh yeah, but uh, yeah, it was, it was a decent episode. Snowy theme. They had. Saint Snow in there, and again, there are failures happening to these characters. So it's like, oh, that's that's good. It's not so perfect after all for them. And they actually characterize the rivals instead of having them be, ha ha ha, we are better than you. You guys are bad, <laughs> you know. So that was that was good. It was, it was a nice nice episode. We got to see not Dia's mole, but Dia's thighs in this episode. <laughs> 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 and uh it was good i liked it uh episode eight of blend s okay so in the opening there's the uh there's the idol character and the, you know the the whole s theme going on the the this character's motive is surprise and what do you know the surprise is that it's a trap so it was a good plot twist certainly so not one i saw coming so we've argued about these four you say it's a trap is it a guy yes as a girl a trap. A girl yeah, who's it's, too it's, young it's a guy. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what it means when when we I, talk about anime traps. I thought I did, but it's people have argued back and forth with me about it. Yeah, but when recently. you when you talk in the anime world about trap, people know what it means. So, yeah, but anime see... traps are boys dressed as girls. Yeah. Can, can you throw up a picture of this trap character? Uh, I yeah. want to. I want to see. I'm always interested to see if there's tells. You know what I mean? It's well, I've I've not got is, them. This is, 
the some first trap characters are just females that are just said, "Oh, well, I'm gonna have a dick," but sometimes you know, like you can figure it out. Right? No, this is a good. This is a good trap character. This character is characterized well, and they just introduce the character in the episode, and then he's straight up like, "Yeah, I'm a guy." <laughs> so this is quite a plot twist, you know, because you see it in the opening, and then you're yeah. like, "Oh, look at that!" And it was a good yeah. episode. The show's back on track. It's doing all its little jokes and everything like that, so it's pretty decent. Oh, oh God, like that. that that's a dude. Yeah, and in, I, mean, I guess in the episode it's more clear. You're like, okay. oh, okay, I see, I see how it works. It, it's a very, I mean, Blendes has a very uh, cutesy style, so I guess it's hard to tell off of faces alone. I feel like I've never seen the Japanese flag in any anime until recently. Really? Really? Yeah, I, I, I can't think of any time that I've seen it before because when I saw it in the dog episode of Love Live. Oh, because I saw it in the dog episode of Love Live. But I was like, oh, look at that. There's the flag. I haven't seen that. I don't see it often as, like, a flag itself. I mean, they obviously have the headband, which is very popular. Oh, yeah, But yeah. I see it a lot as, like, I don't know. If, okay, maybe I've watched more, like, military characters in anime well, yeah. than other people have. It's, that no, have, like, it's, not gonna be a, it's not going to be a flag flying in k all the time, you know. But I not just thought usually. that was amusing. Because for some reason in my head, I was like, that's a thing that I don't see very often. But as um, that flag... That, yeah, but uh, the MMO Addict show is doing pretty decent. I feel like this show would be better if it was half length, twelve episodes, because it's only ten episodes. Oh God! It's oh. Only... <laughs> Jesus Christ! You... <laughs> no, I had a burp. What the fuck was that? I had a burp what was coming. that? I had a burp coming. I it thought you came. were dying. <laughs> I know. Good God! I thought you were about to throw up your anus. <laughs> No, but this show, uh, it it's uh, really riding the plot out and everything really slow sometimes. And there's a lot of stuff where this could be a movie and it would have been perfectly effective kind of thing. But mm. it's not bad. It's the same as it's always been. Umaru, the last episode of Umaru, <laughs> was an episode where, again, I kind of shit in my pants again because there was a moment when it was supposed to be nice, cute brother-sister thing, and then they're lying together, and you see normal brother and this tiny, bite-sized, freaking shit creature right there beside him, and it's supposed to be cute, like, oh, look at them, they're looking at the stars, but you're looking at this... Freaking creature, not even a human. And then anytime the brother picks her up, he's picking up this little freaking this little demon hobbit creature thing. And you're like, that's not even cute because it's supposed to be a real human, but it's. <laughs> it's okay, man. Well, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's we get the you. kind of emotion that can only be expressed with random musical interludes. <laughs> no, Umaru is Umaru. It's, it's whatever. That's that's what I watched. Fantastic. I said earlier that I didn't watch shit, and that's kind of true for the fall season, let's say. You following me? You following me? I'm following you. I'm following but I you. did I did watch something. Okay. And bringing it back to Bleach, because that's what this episode's about, pedophilia and Bleach. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> oh it's bad, isn't it? Uh, I watched uh, the second Blue Chip movie, uh, The Diamond Dust Rebellion. Uh huh. Because I was sitting at home and I was halfway through writing the first chapter of my second Bleach fanfic. And I thought I could really use some sweet inspiration right now. I'll watch The Diamond Dust Rebellion because that's the best Bleach movie. Mm hmm. And I kind of want to talk about why it's the best Bleach movie, if that's okay with you two. That's all yeah, right. Sure. I'm going to go get a bowl of cereal with Dio's Mole. Why not? Do that. Vegan knows what I'm talking about. I do. So I've seen Diamond do you, Dust. Do you remember Diamond Dust at all? I do remember it. I remember watching it. In fact, I still have the DVD somewhere. Um, but yeah, I watched it years ago. Can you give me a plot summary? <laughs> Toshiro Hitsugaya had a good friend who had the same Zanpak toe as him. Uh, they... Only one person can have a Zanpak toe. Like, they have to be unique to the person, which doesn't make sense in a canical form now that because, Bleach is finished. Because of reasons. Yeah. Um, so, they have to fight for it. And Toshiro Hitsugaya wins. This guy is exiled or cast out. Now he wants to take on everyone, and I can't remember what else happens. 
<laughs> she uh, basically wants to overthrow the soul site because they outcast him and Toshiro hits a guy who gets framed for several murders and attacks. That that's a pretty good summary. There's also a pair of hot around cartoons. Yeah who fight Rukia, who I remember I, them. Who who I forgot about. But yeah, if we want a terrible logline for this movie, Ice Boy gets uh, annoyed with Ice Man and they fight about it. Or it'd be Snowboy and Snowman much it. get in a fight. But Snowboy and Snowman. This kind of gets back to I was watching it and thinking, man, this is the best in Bleach movie. It's not because like it has better action scenes. Mm-hmm. It's not because it has like a better plot. Because some of the other Bleach movies have very good plots, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, like uh, the first one is Memories of Nobody, which is like a soul who's like created of all like the random memories that are existing in like the interstitial space between the, in the dawn afterlife guy. and the real world. That's interesting. Yeah, Fade to Black was cool. Kind of interesting in that there's like characters who are like dead souls are like coming back from Rukia's past and like messing with her. Yeah, it was. It's, it's it an was interesting a movie plot. setup, but Fade to Black loses a hell of a lot of points and becomes the worst Bleach movie because it just and and uh practice it's just greatest hits of the Soul Society arc again. Yeah. Because they ran out of ideas, I guess. And Hellverse is interesting because it's completely different than anything fucking else. In the entire anime. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah Hellverse gets Hellverse. a lot of points for that and it also has a bitch and soundtrack. But I was thinking about this real hard and I realized the Diamond Dust Rebellion because it has a cool storyline, has a bitchin' soundtrack. If you ever get a chance to just listen to that soundtrack, because it's very oh yeah, that's where most of the Iran car bits come from, like well, no. um, invasion. Sure. Well, it does a lot of the really cool bleach songs come in from like, but like a lot of the Iran car bits are all like Spanish guitar. Yeah, they're all on. At least the one I saw was Diamond Dust Rebellion and Fate's Black soundtracks. Now, that's all I'm getting that from. I don't know. Yeah, it's really good, but um, uh, the thing I realize that makes it the best Bleach movie is that it doesn't – it's not entirely Ichigo-centric. No, there's a lot of – um. They, well, Toshiro is the main guy. Toshiro is kind of the main guy, but they still sh- sh- like shove um, Shuhor and Ichigo in, in there as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Like he kind of gives this big speech at the end that keeps all the other captains from killing Toshiro, right? Yeah. And but then Toshiro does a lot of work, and at the end they end up finishing off the bad guy kind of together. But then Toshiro does the final blow. But still, it made me really like settle in that as much as I enjoyed watching Ichigo when I was you know sixteen, seventeen, or whatever, when I was about the age of the character, I could still yeah. relate there. Ichigo is just not that interesting. He doesn't have a drive, as we mentioned earlier this episode. He doesn't have anything he's trying to get to. He just wants to protect people, which is mm-hmm. fine from a philosophical point of view. But, like, it doesn't make it interesting if you don't have any sort of goal. No, I mean, no. uh, Luffy in One Piece wants to find the One Piece. Uh, Naruto wants to be uh, the best, Hokage. believe it. Yeah, yeah, pr- yeah, it's essentially I want to be the best ninja in my village. Ichigo is just trying to get by in life. And he doesn't. He wants to save Rukia and then save Arhime and then yeah. um, get powers back. And well, then this I'm not was entirely, the... entirely sure what the fuck happens in the last arc. I'll be honest. That was his. Um, that was the thing uh, we touched on earlier. Is obviously he's a very reactionary. He is like, very reactionary. Rukia gets taken away. Guess we'll go save Rukia then. Arhime gets taken away. Guess we'll go say Harima then. Oh yeah. wait, uh, my powers have gone. These guys tell me to get my powers back. I guess I will. Oh, yep. and then I guess does. I'll come. And then the third arc, act, the third arc, we'll call it, quote unquote, happens, and all sorts of weird shit. I honestly don't remember half of it because so much <laughs> shit was jumping. Yeah, he Beach. he gets lo- locked in a prison. Then he gets his bunkai broken and then he has to go back and realize who he was and then he speaks to his dad and finds out the hollow thing. thing. And then, yeah, then he goes fights Yuwach, Yuwahabach. There was 15 yeah. translations for his name. Very confusing. <laughs> Yuhabach we settled on. Yuhabach. And it was third. I, the Quincy arc I always just kind of ignore. I'll be honest with you. I, yeah. I need to reread it because I have no memory of it. But definitely, he 
he never has motivation for any one specific thing. He's not striving for anything. Okay. Ichigo's. This is the thing with with Ichigo. Uh, I I remember because I rewatched Bleach from the beginning, uh, at least the first sixty four episodes with uh with my girlfriend quite recently, like last year. And what I remembered is that Ichigo did have plot points. He did have things and interesting like s- character arcs. He does. But they're all done he in has, episode yeah. ten. He has interesting plot arcs. He has development he undergoes, and he certainly has short-term goals. But yeah, he's never no like long... there's no lo- nothing long-term we're shooting for. Which like as much as remember... I love Bleach, it's yeah, hard for me to like mother? say that. Yeah, like and the mother Grand thing. Fisher. Yeah, that that could have been stretched out several arcs, but it gets resolved as I say in the it, first it, in the fifteen the problem... episodes. Because Grand Fisher eventually is killed by Ishin, his father. Yeah. But... He never learns that. No one no, tells he Ichigo know. Grand Fisher's dead. <laughs> no, they don't. Ichigo doesn't know. He just thinks he's chilling somewhere in Waco God, Mundo. It, there's just so many messed up things with that. And like I was reading the uh, Wikipedia or my like, TV Trips articles for um, – because at this point there's two – okay, one and a half. Because after Bleach ended, there was one light novel that came out. That was already kind of in production, I think, because it came out in 2016, the same year Bleach ended, right? Yeah. And that was called I Do Not Always Love You with Not Being Spelled K-N-O-T, like a knot in rope. What? Like, no, I haven't. I, heard, I knew there was a novel, but I had no idea that was the title. That's that's it. That's the thing. There was two novels because there was a series of Bleach light novels already. Mm-hmm. And then in December, I think, of 2016 or November, late in 2016, uh, I Do Not Always Love You came out. And again, tying the knot, pun thing. And it's all about Rukia's wedding. So that is post the Bleach before the uh, epilogue. Yeah. And now it's still in production They because it's being released serially. There's another one, which I remember the name of. It's not coming to my head. But it's all about uh, His- Hisage, the uh, ninth. Lieutenant, Ninth Squad's lieutenant. Yeah, yeah, and, Shuhei and that's, Sage. Yeah, and he's like finding stuff like Tosin left behind, like a secret or something, and like he's connecting dots. But like so far, the two light novels that have come out post the end of the Bleach manga have both been all about how tying up loose ends. And I was reading a bunch of the loose ends from I Do Not Always Love You or We Do Not Always Love You. Did I get it wrong? Whatever it is. And it's just like so many loose ends and just so many little things that didn't get tied up. And I don't know why I love Bleach so much. I'm forgetting sometimes. I <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Bleach is still one of my favorite ever animes, and it'll always be probably top three, top I'll one, say, top I, two. I, I think ultimately, because Bleach has been such an influence on my life, yeah, I say that like I've you know gone off to become the strongest warrior at some like <laughs> I dyed my head ginger, yeah. <laughs> but my personality and like my writing style has been heavily influenced by Bleach. Wait. And I just yes, vacant. You need to do your Ichigo voice again. My Ichigo voice. Remember I from the reading, <laughs> you did the best voice for Ichigo. I still remember it and laughed about it today. Uh, <laughs> hey I'm... guys. I mean, you go. It was like the best oh, yeah. thing ever. I can't remember. <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm Ichigo Kurosaki. Basically something like that. It was amazing. Sorry, I had to interrupt him. Sorry. That's okay. I'm just glad that you're still here and paying attention, man. Well, that's plus points. This time I'm last e- year, eating, you wouldn't be. <laughs> I'm eating a Reese's Pieces. Reese's Puffs. Reese's Puffs. Reese's Puffs. Reese's Puffs. Peanut butter, chocolate, flavor. Oh, yeah, they're called Reese's Puffs, not Reese's Pieces, you stupid idiot. You dink. I mean, Reese's Pieces are just peanut butter wrapped in candy shell. That's true. I like peanut butter. Peanut butter's great. But, uh, any rate. Wait, 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 I forgot now. Oh, uh, yeah. We were talking uh, about Bleach. But, yeah, yeah. I, I can't honestly say why I was so enraptured in Ichigo's character for so long, because he has nothing going on. He was cool. He was time. cool. He's a badass, but, and he's cool. That's what it is, and that ultimately, you know, drags you in. But I, I guess so. It's just at this point, like, I because I think you need to look. If you love something, you have to look at it critically, right? Yeah, exactly. I can say objectively. Um, I will always say objectively. Bleach 
didn't have the best story, didn't have the best main character. There was so many shortcomings with it, but then it becomes that thing where I guess it's everything is personal. I still enjoyed the hell out of mm-hmm. it, and it always has a special place in my heart. There's still so many characters that I love from that series, yeah, and the... you know moments that you enjoy. So that's the thing I kind of want to make is that all these side characters are so much more enjoyable Better. than Ichigo is <laughs> yeah. to well, watch. Like I could that... watch, a, I could read a million chapters about whatever Byakuya or Zaraki are up to that day. Kisuke. Right? Kisuke Urahara is one of the most interesting characters for me in that. He and, is. Like, hands down. And Kubo, this is the... if, if nothing else, has just an infinite supply of interesting characters in his sleeve. And it's designs. Just, and designs. Ah, oh, his fucking designs. Fuck, his designs are so good. If I could buy uh, the Kubo fashion line, I would. <laughs> He's a stylish motherfucker. But um, yeah, that influenced my writing style to a to a degree. Where I always thought, like in Shonen and stuff, because it was one of the first ones of that in Dragon Ball Z. I was like, I guess your main character sort of a bland vehicle to the rest of everyone else. Because whenever it you look at them is. character polls. You look at a character poll in like Bleach, Dragon Ball, Naruto, Fairy Tail, any of those, My Hero Academia, any of those shonen shows. The main character ain't the number one, and ne- never number one. But sometimes at the beginning, but like when they do a cool thing or get a new power, but yeah. most of the time they're in top ten, top five. But, but it is an interesting comparison because like we go to Dragon Ball Z. I was always enraptured by Goku because he just he had a goal. He wanted to be. He just wanted to have fun fights with people. He wanted to be the strongest and have and fight people who were strong. Yeah. And he was so damn lovable that you followed him. Yeah, I always I suppose that's weird. yeah. Actually. But with Ichigo it's just kinda like I'm gonna save people and like, yeah, I want to see that person get saved, but I don't necessarily care that Ichigo's doing it. Yeah. Ichigo's just our overpowered protagonist of the day. It's just it's very it's a very strange outlook. But speaking of, like, being influenced on writing styles, when I, like, started, especially when I wrote the last Bleach fanfic I did and writing on this one, now I realized this is why writing Bleach comes so fucking easy to me is because I'm so influenced by it already. Yes. I mean, oh, God, yeah. As soon as you start writing anything with Bleach, it's like, yeah, no, I get it. This this feels like Bleach. This is yeah. a Bleach thing to do. Like I was at, when I was at home when I was writing on my phone, I brought up <laughs> Spotify on my phone, and I'm just playing a couple of the intros, and I'm like, "Fuck it, this is it. This is why I'm doing this. This is you why I started writing yeah. God, first goddamn place for you this." Immediately, yeah, no, I was, I was, I agree. Bleach was the thing that made me. I started watching Bleach in 2009, and 2010 was when I first started. Re- like writing a shonen style thing that was an incredible squat by the way manimal uh, manimal squatting for us in his long pants um okay. yeah definitely bleach had a big influence on us um shonen does because I, I like to write shonen and that my watching my hero academia and binge reading black clover this year got me back into writing and motivated me to go back into that oh yeah like i i can't Especially reading Shonen, because the main story I write, Horn Saga, which I say it's the main story I write anymore. I'm still working on it. Please don't. Please forgive me, Lego. But uh, <laughs> it is very Shonen based, so it helps to watch Shonen stuff. Like watching, um, uh, since, I mean, I haven't watched anything this week, but uh, uh, Vanishing Line Garo, Garo Vanishing Line, however you want to say it, has been a great help for me wanting to like just write, because every. Like, it has a kick-ass intro, and, like, muscles are happening, and people are getting the shit beat out of them with giant swords. I'm like, this is what I'm here for. Just cool muscles stuff happening. Happen. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of cool stuff happening, uh, uh, unless there's anything else you want to add to the Bleach, the I, bleach talk, I'll... I, I think I've kind of said my piece. Okay. Hey, guys. <laughs> my favorite From the song distance. off Bleach is Negative Creep. It's pretty good. It's good. Um, has great music. Let's not let's not oh, lie. Fuck it, dead. It had great visuals, great music. I also like about a girl from Bleach. Some of the uh, openings and endings were the best ones ever. Some of my favorites in I, I, in anime. I still love Life is Like a Boat. Cause you know what? Yeah, Life is like a boat. Nobody <laughs> knows. <laughs> that confused the fuck out of me when I first started watching because it. 
it's in English, and then it starts kicking into Japanese or Korean, whatever. I don't, I don't. Is is she Korean? I assume it's Japanese. I don't fucking okay. know. I remember. I don't know. I'm thinking of something else, maybe. But yeah, and then it just kicks into Japanese. And I was like, "Hang on, what have I done? Have I clicked <laughs> something? What's going on?" Um, like an idiot thinking that the in- ending would also be an English dub thing. Um, in terms of what I've been watching fall season, I watched uh, this. Is, I don't know why I said that, and now I'm about to tell you something I watched that isn't fall season. I was watching more ghost stories English dub because that's always fun. Oh, I um, fucking love that. Watched that back in college with Nair. We had a grand old time. Because we were talking about Chris R's and he's in that, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to watch that a little bit and watch a few episodes, and it was good fun. Um, I then watched some more Onorogaru, binged the first six episodes. Oh, my God. No, the last six episodes, sorry, because I didn't watch the final ones. So everyone go and watch the Onorogaru Fart Party, episode 11, and that was always good. Um, And he goes to rescue the fart world. Those aren't full season. I don't know why I mention them. In terms of full season, I watched Black Clover episode eight. Is good. Now it's getting on with it. And what did what did they do in episode eight? Okay, episode in, eight is you when can't they spoil it for me. I already watched, read the fucking manga. Yeah. Well, there's more filler. It's the like really. What is that? Animal is that? doing something. Manimal's just unveiled like a gigantic poster that's is bigger that... than him. Is, is that looks... Elvis? Yeah. Okay. Is that Elvis? That's, yeah. Elvis or like not Jimmy Dean, the other J- Dean. He's got like an eight foot poster of Elvis that oh, he just not pulled that. out of nowhere. What if you go? It's, 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 it's a, a norm- reason it's rolled up. It's a normal size poster of Elvis. Manimal's just I don't think very big. He's at least not a- very wide, I'll tell you that. If you like a- if you're like your men thin, Manimal is available right now for you. I was just doing a Slav squat earlier too. Yeah, so he's got them calves. I need a piss. I, you've totally <laughs> thrown me. Out. I'll be, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> that was really uh, universe breaking, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, I um watched Black Clover episode eight. That's one of the things I watched for the full season this week. Um, it's such a weird episode to explain because it was kind of filler, but not. Uh, the best I can say is that they took a very small portion of the story and padded it out for a full episode. So I mean, that's, spoilers... how, that's how it feels like for the most of the filler episodes so far. So what they yeah. they said they were going to take it to what fifty something episodes? Fifty one is the current like schedule sure. thing. Episode eight consisted of them waking up in the morning uh, at the Black Bulls headquarters for lack of a better term they're all eating we yeah. get a bit more character development it was fun it was a fun five minutes Asta asks what the wizard um what the magic knights do um they all explain it in their own way which is it's fun it gives you a good a glimpse and insights to characters can't remember if they do that in the manga but um it was there, there was certainly a chapter in the manga where they're like here's the black knights this is what we do by the way we're all kind of fuck-ups yeah, so we all it was have really stupid fun. Stupid explanations of how things work. Oh yeah, so it wasn't as I re- as I recall, they do get pretty quick onto like the next thing is like finding that like yes. treasure cavern, right? Um, before then, the first mission that they all go on, um, which is what this episode is. So in the manga, this is the part of the manga they got the morning where everyone goes, yeah, magic knights do this. This is why I'm a magic knight. Blah 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 blah. This is my character. Just a quick, you know, introduction to everyone. Then they go, right, let's go on a first mission. Let's go hunt some boars or something. Noel, Asta, and Magna. Yeah, because they introduced go. Noel, and that was kind of a thing. So yeah. like she wasn't in there because of, like, the normal procedure. She just kind of gets brought in because of political reasons, she's, I guess. Yeah, she's a royal. Back, um, she, was, she took a back door into the squad. Yeah. Because she's already there when Asta shows up. Boy, she doesn't... Even though in the anime she's trying out for the squads. Yeah. So there's like a... It's very weird. The... I don't know if she was in the in the tryouts in the manga or if she just showed up at the house. I'm pretty certain she wasn't. The first thing she does is she comes in to... I'm sure she comes into the, the headquarters at first. Um, yeah, also, quick side note... Ooh, she doesn't look good in the anime. At least in this episode, I was just like, mm, something's a bit off about she the design. She doesn't look great in the intro, to be honest. 
Yeah, I, I'm not a fan. I think the manga design carries over better than the anime. I don't know why. I think it's the eyes and the face. It just doesn't quite look as, it, as good. It's weird, because when I think of Noelle in the manga, I always imagine her making one of her, like, comical faces. Oh, yeah. Like, not like, like, the one where her face is, like, just an inverted, like, triangle looking yeah. thing, kind of. <laughs> That's the one I, always... I imagine the most. Because well, that... I always just imagine the little sourpuss face that she does. Yeah, that, little... it's kind of the same thing, honestly. Yeah, that's her her face. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but they basically take the part where they introduce them in a few panels, and then they go out for their first mission, and it turns out they can't use magic, and they can't control magic, so they have to fly on so on, on a Magnus broomstick to God, he has his village. Broomstick. His cool super decked out broomstick that is about half a chapter 10 or 12 pages at most of the manga that's the entire episode there is filler there's bits where they put in uh noel and asta go with manga and yami to play cards or strip poker with the fucking dude who looks like one of the captains from attack on titan it's really weird i forgot which anime i was watching at that point um, it's so slow paced. I just want them to get to the good stuff. It's, oh, it's going to be like episode 30 by the time they get to the treasure cavern. It's taking so long. <sighs> yeah, but it'll but get there. I, I know we talked about how they're sort of padding things out because we figured at the time we didn't know if they're getting more episodes or not. But it, come on, really? Sometimes there's, what, you just there's 140 ish go. chapters of the m- manga out. They don't they, think... I guess they're banking on the fact that it's got a name and they don't have to try and pull you in. But it was like, if I was just watching this... Because uh, I've read the manga, so obviously I will carry on reading obviously. it. Uh, watching it, rather. But I... My Hero Academia, I'd watch the first... I think I'd read the first couple volumes and that's it. Um, so when I watched the anime, I soon went past where I'd gotten to in the manga. If mm. it didn't... If the anime didn't grab me past the point I'd read, because I hadn't read far at all, um, I would have dropped it. So by the first, the first season grabbed me. The first thirteen episodes got me, and I wanted to continue. I don't see Black Clover really grabbing people in the first twelve episodes, unless you know something happens. But anyway, enough of Black Clover. Yeah. Fuck Black Clover. It, it, no, it's hard to say though, because like when I first got introduced to Bleach, I watched the anime, and at the time, I think the anime was probably up to. It's hard to say when it was actually was when I started watching it, but I watched it pretty quick. So it was basically like nearish the end of the Arancar arc, anime wise. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that was again probably the summer of two thousand eight. I started watching Bleach anime, and if it wasn't like you know doing cool stuff, I wouldn't have kept up with it. You know, I would have never gone around the reading yeah. the manga or anything like that. But then again. I, I don't know. It's hard to say because I, I assume they're probably basing this production schedule completely off Japanese numbers because I don't know if they're even recording American numbers. I'm sure they are to a degree, but like it's hardly what they're looking concentrating on, is it? No, I, I'm Just sure. Western numbers in general, I should say. So like it might be make it might make more sense from a business perspective to just give a few more episodes of filler because you imagine that a lot of people are just going to be watching this anyways because they either A, read the manga, or B, they'll find it later and they'll just push straight through this. Yeah. If we weren't watching this sequentially, if we were watching this later on when it was already, you know, God, there's a word for it, when it's like been vaporized already and like put away. Serial versus whatever. If we were watching it, if we weren't watching it when it came out, if we were watching it after the fact, it would make a lot more sense for these things to be stretched out a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah it's yeah, easier yeah. to handle that way because it's only, it's not, you're not waiting every week. You're watching episode after episode after episode after episode if you're binge watching it, basically. Yeah. It wouldn't be as bad in hindsight when you blitzed for it. Yeah, I do agree. Um, We'll see. I mean, obviously, we know we we have the benefit of the manga and knowing that it probably will pick up. Well, it will pick up. We know it does. So. It kind of has to because there's not a lot of downtime in between the individual arcs of the fair, uh, fairy tale, uh, Black Clover manga. No. Like once it gets going, it kind of gets going. 
I mean, yeah, I that's imagine, true. I imagine there'll be filler episodes between like the Avengers of Arcs, but you can't do that much. No, Can you? there'll be filler, but yeah, I think they'll they'll start really kicking on with the plot. Although, uh, to be honest, I would love to see a proper filler. Arc. I haven't seen one in a long time. I I no no I, I'm, no. Oh, maybe that's jaded coming off of Bleach, who had some fantastic filler arcs and. Obviously, some bad filler arcs, but there's, there's an art the to the fill, there's an art to the filler arc that I hope younger generations don't forget because they should be able to deal with the same shit we did. Yeah, no, you get twelve episodes animes, then twenty four, then fifty, and that's how it'll go. Uh, speaking of a twelve episode anime, I watched episode eight of Junie Tyson, and that show. I think they're losing budget every episode because it's looking more and more like a piece of shit. <laughs> but damn, the visuals are getting rough. Hi, yeah, it's getting ugly. I, I, it was very pretty. I hope it doesn't get too bad, but we'll see. I mean, Again, I, I haven't watched the last episode, so it's... episode four, I noticed some shaky lines, but this episode, episode eight, pretty much the entire time I was watching it, I couldn't look off how like janky the frames were how the line art on the characters was oh was not great at all the shading was very flat oh it was a cheap episode was this it, were, I they, mean, I'm hoping... were they going off model at all no it was this was all like a flashback so maybe it was one that it, it's not a they've devoted uh, not really spoilers i guess this isn't spoiling anything but um, episode 7 delved into Snake and Dragon, the twins, sure. and their history. Yeah. So does episode 8, which is baffling to do, because Snake is dead. Snake has been dead since the first episode. They're not a character anymore. They are a meat puppet controlled by another character, a necromancer. Co- correction, a there are two meat puppets. One's a head, one's a body. Oh, okay. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> but um, it's it's really weird that you would devote a six of the show, like, granted, Dragon is obviously still there, and he's still a very active character, but he's not gonna be a huge player from the looks of it, I mean, I'm assuming. From the looks of it, but it's... Like, I mean... Because all they did in these last two episodes was sort of go, here they are, the assholes, there you go. They come off like they're, that. They're mercenaries, can, there you can, go. Now, can you answer a question for me, since I haven't watched the episode yet? In yeah. the in the uh, outro to each episode, they show yeah. Snake and Dragon. One of them's gambling, and one of them's like watching TV on like a bunch of computer monitors. Which one's which? I think um, gambling is Snake, and I think TV monitor one is Dragon. Because that's what I sure. kind of got the impression of, considering we only got to see Dragon's perspective. But Snake, again, seemed like he probably did something stupid to get his head cut off, like, immediately, right? Yeah. So he He, had to be the brash one. He is the more brash one. He's definitely the more forward one. Um, What's what's interesting that you mentioned the ending, the ending seems to be going, minus Snake, because Snake is in a different position. Yeah. He's straight after Dragon, but with the exception of Snake... Every character so far has died in the order that they appear in the in the ending. Yeah. And we've got to like six or Which seven deaths. I was now. kinda worried about, but <clears throat> the thing with them is I don't know if that's just the order of their being killed or necessarily or if that's the order of the Zodiac. I don't know. Like you know how the Western Zodiac has its specific order, right? Yeah. Like Ares leads to Taurus leads to yada yada yada. So I don't know if the, I assume the Chinese zodiac has a similar get up. Shall we see? Because we can find the order. Okay, so the order of the Chinese zodiac, from the looks of it, is rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig. Okay, no then. Oh wait, but God if you reverse it, that's it, the exact order. The reverse order is how they're dying in Junie Tyson. If you reverse it, yeah, Fuck. shit, pig. Who's the dog, first? Who is rooster? the first in that list? Who's living? Was that Tiger? Um, the the first on the list was Rat. Rat lives! God damn it. Okay, it's so in order... In order... 
fuck yeah Cho- Junie Tyson the reverse the dying in reverse like the last to first so pig is last that's the boar boar die first then dog then rooster then monkey then um sheep sheep yeah then horse sheep, sheep then horse it's all playing out exactly like Junie Tyson so according to this then dragon's next dragon's then, the rabbit, then the rabbit then tiger then ox I assume tiger and ox will probably end up killing themselves maybe Tiger, ox, and rabbit will all just have a free way and really kill each other. <laughs> well, that's a tiger, ox, and rabbit. Ooh. I've seen tiger. And let me tell you. I love tiger. Tiger's my favorite. Tiger's, and, uh, she's I love, funny. she's got a great design. I mean, I know it's mostly like lingerie, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> she got cat ears. I, I, she's got cat ears and she's got a tail. And she's an alcoholic. I, I'm t- and she's an alcoholic. That's a plus. I'm taking. I'm assuming she's 18. I don't know. She's definitely yeah. She's absolutely. Gotta, I hope she's 18. God damn it. Um, yeah. The, We're next. God damn it. Oh my god. I can't believe we just solved it. But yeah, Junie Tyson nine ten. You know, hope, I'm looking forward to episode nine because these flashbacks have been a low point of the series, and then. Inu Yashiki is what I caught up with, and oh, it's so good. Epi- I that is one of them shows that lends itself really well to being episodic. So you watch one a week because there's a lot of shit that they throw at you, and you need time to sort of digest it. Um, so bad guy Psycho Kid is a bad guy Psycho Kid, and he was with his mama. That's where we left him off, and the police found where he was. He runs off because, you know, he doesn't want to be caught. He can't really be caught. So he runs off and it is all over the news. And because he's a robot thing, he can tap into the news. He's seeing all these things. He's seeing people trolling his mom and saying how his mom and his parents are shit and raising him. His mom's there making an apology on TV because of him. Like, you know, she doesn't know what he's done, but obviously they've told her. Um one of his classmates hide him out, a girl who has a crush on him, and she lives with he lives with her and her grandma. Um, his mum ends up committing suicide because of it all, and people, you know, the press that hounding her. That took a fucking dark turn, Jesus. Um, they end up hounding her because, you know, she's the mum of a murderer, a serial killer, and he then goes through... It's kind of bizarre episode because... A good 15 minutes of it is where he essentially goes through 2chan, which is obviously 4chan, finds these trolls, and then fire like he fires bullets through the screen at them. He speaks to each one of them on their screen, and then kills them. And he does that, and it's like a montage of him killing all of these trolls. And then uh, he kind of explains why he did it to the girl. So he just basically informs her about how... The only time he's ever felt alive, well, he, ever since he got turned into a robot, he remembers a time when he saw a man jump in front of a train. And that time, he remembers his heart beating and he's never felt so alive, so he's trying to recreate that rush. And that's why he's killed people. But then he just decides on the dime because she's like, oh, you shouldn't really do that. It's not fair. And he's like, okay, I'll save people then. So then he just decides to save people. So he becomes a faith healer on Twitter and meets people in back alleys and starts healing them. But he becomes a faith healer? He, like, heals them because he can. he's a magic robot that can heal cancer or any kind of ailment. So anyone who contacts him on Twitter, he'll meet them in a back alley or something, and then he just heals them. And it's the most... One of the funny ones that introduces a girl, this woman who's, like, a cancer patient, and she's, got, she's terminally ill with cancer and she's at work. And she goes to, like, her boss invites her to lunch, just a quick setup for these characters... And he's literally going to her like, oh, so have you got any family? And she's like, no. Oh, okay. So are you dealing with this all alone then? Yeah. Have you not even got a boyfriend? No. Oh, so you're just going to die all alone? Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's like so blase about it. It's like, yeah, way to support her. He's like, well, uh, if you need anything, uh, I guess I'm here for you. Um... And that episode ends, so he's kind of turned over a new leaf, he's he's saving people. Episode ends with a SWAT team approaching the house, so he's... It's just little he, idyllic lifestyle will be over. He, just, he doesn't need to be a faith healer, he can just be a regular healer. He's not a faith healer, I don't know why I said faith healer, he, there's no religion to it, he just heals people. 
it's very strange. Like, I don't know. It's a strange show, and it seems has it even concentrated on the old man for a while, or has it kind of gone off? Of Not that? really. Not really. The it's been focusing on him. I thought he was just going to be set up as the antagonist. Um, whereas now he's more. He's been fleshed out far more than you originally thought he was going to be. Um, so we've had his motive. We've seen him go through. We've seen emotion. He cried his eyes out when his mum died. Like he did. He he decided like that was kind of a sad moment like he when he asked his mum how she felt because it was on the news about the serial killer before he got found out he asked her you know he says oh you know how would you feel if you met them what would you do if it was your son and she was talking about it and then because she disapproved he decided to himself he was done killing he was never going to kill again he won't do that because he didn't want to disappoint his mama but then the police come and it's too late and it's kind of I like, I like don't kill it. people on the news. I'm like, fuck, I can't kill people anymore. Mom said so. Yeah, he's like, I don't want to disappoint Mama because you know she's a good girl. And then he gets found out, and now it's too late, and now he's on the run. So if um, you're if you're an aspiring supervillain, don't kill your don't love your mothers. Yeah, don't do anything. Have mom bad childhoods, <laughs> I guess. It's one I really uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to episode eight. I really want to see it. That's it. I was going to watch Just Puzz because what I didn't doesn't matter. That's all for me. That's all I've watched. Um, yeah, that's all I've watched this season. Speaking of the next season, though, winter season, Manimal's going to have to run back to his microphone so he can talk again. Manimal's um, been giving taking us a tour of the house. We saw his washing machine. Oh, yeah. Saw it that all. sexy, sexy washing machine as I played with my Starscream action figure. Yeah. He, We're uh, yeah, why well, rented... the happy hour? You can tell how invested we are into this episode. <laughs> We're very... It's a better episode, actually. I think. No, it, it, I it's, think it's good. It's just you were talking. I don't have so... a lot to comment on the particular show you're talking about. Yeah, no, we've we've been going a while now, so we need to uh, bounce out. But we oh. just need to let you know, guys. Next week is going to be how fucking insane is this? Next week will be our winter season preview. It's fucking insane. Winter season preview can you next hear week. Me right now? Yeah, we can hear you. It's you just it. sound like you're in the washing machine still. Oh, An animal's shit. currently Did in his washing machine. Um, I mean, he's disconnected. No, it just sounds too far away. Yeah, because it's my laptop, Mike. That's okay. That's fine. We're we we're, we're, we're bouncing now. It's okay. Um, or you can disconnect. I don't know. You do what you do. You you do you, fam. Um, yeah, so next week we'll be doing the winter season preview, which is fucking insane. It's first week of December next week. Yeah, it feels uh, like we're only halfway through the fall season. Well, we're up to episode eight. I know. On some things. So episode nine on a couple of things. Uh, fucking hell. Jesus. Anyway, any parting shots from you guys from the month of November? I'm going to have to take a parting shot to the kneecap. Just to the kneecap. Hey, hey, hey. He's doing good. We're flashing back to the Black Friday. We're still here in the middle of Zellers, and uh, I have several black eyes from an old lady trying to get a Cuisinart. Oh, God. Don't, yeah, we're in Black Friday. The doors have opened. The people have come past. Uh, d- uh, did they, do you guys want to go to the Zellers in Caminestaqua? Is it going to be are, any? Are there. And they're we're less populated than this Zellers? Yeah. Do they still have the Optimus Prime 50th Anniversary Edition? Uh, that's next year. God damn it. Fine, let's go to the uh, other sellers in Quatsalakaka. This, this Black Friday was useless. All I did was beat an old lady over the head with a Nintendo Switch. And you but, ruined you the know, Switch in the meantime. I know. That's what I never understand about Black Friday. The the amount that people go fucking psychotic and ballistic and grab and rip shit out of their hands and fall and trample all over these things. They're going to be fucking broken. TV isn't that sturdy. That's why You're most fucking... Black Friday sales last, like, all of November nowadays. That's why, you know, back in the de- back in the Target day, you know what happened? People, people went to Target for some reason on Black Friday, and they were like I- iPads I- on I- sale. So before they open, people, the security guy is going around like, here are your tickets to buy the iPad or whatever. We had that in England as well. Here's your tick. Have a ticket. Yeah. Ten people in the store. Ten people in the store. When ten leave, you can go. Yeah. It was, Certain limits, like max two per customer and all that kind of stuff. It was orderly because we don't take Black Friday that seriously, and it was Target, Rip Target. Yeah. yeah. Ha- hashtag Rip Target. 
any store in the UK pretty much is like that, where there's a queuing system or there's a certain limit to the people in there. Yeah, it because... seems as you love the queue over there. I think it's because they don't want people being fucking animals. <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh, yeah. That's real... every Black Friday, some somebody gets trampled. I remember when the PlayStation 3 comes out, uh, there was a couple people, people getting trampled to death for PlayStation 3s. Oh, there was also the Imagine... classic Black Friday death count website, wasn't there? Yeah. Uh, America goes fucking hard. Imagine that was uh, fucking stupid as well. <laughs> it's is. fucking stupid. But, um, I mean, Imagine uh, people, th- what? there is a heaven. And that's what you go to the pearly gates for, and they say, "Oh, okay. oh, it's um, it's natural selection and action." If you ever doubted evolution, hmm. pe- stupid people get themselves killed. My favorite Black Friday video is definitely the one where the, uh, the woman steals like it's like a steam steamer or like a rice cooker. It's rice it's cooker. something, some sort of kitchen and... you. Utility. Or a pan or a what. It's like something in a box and everyone tramples over it and falls over this pile of stuff. And they're just grabbing shit. Like, they don't even look at it. There's no way they saw the price because they're just grabbing stuff. This woman's got two. Her small child's got one in its hand. <laughs> then this kid, then this woman grabs it and steals it from the kid. The woman, the mother of the child then begins to attempt to grab her and gets a sort of half in a headlock and the woman goes why are you being so aggressive you're scaring me after she just ripped this fucking box from a small child he, <laughs> look this is why i've never gone out on black friday because it's fu- fucking terrifying and i don't want anything I want you to <gasps> Ugh, shit, do with it i want you to wear a body cam and just get as loads of the action shots oh, or yes. when we can we time our trip from Canada to Kansas for Black Friday. So oh, can, yeah, uh, yeah. Do you want to come, come to my over. parents' house for Thanksgiving? <laughs> yes, please. Yes, oh, oh that'd be sick. I went, okay, I, it, you, we're making this joke right now, but on the way, on the drive home, I was thinking about next year, and we're playing through one. You know how you play with, like, future conversations in your head? Oh, yeah. You know, that kind of, yeah. I was sitting there going... In my head on the way home, going, Mom, Dad, this is Mordecai. He is my friend from Africa. <laughs> Hello, I am Mordecai. Do you have any nickel memes? <laughs> yeah. My parents going, what the fuck are you talking about? He's here for Thanksgiving. He's going to sleep on my bedroom floor because there's no place else in our house. I yeah. would love Lego to ask your parents for I would, nickel memes. I but... would fucking love to have a sleepover with Lego. I know we're way too old for sleepovers, but I want to have a sleepover. You're not old Lego. enough for that. You just sleep in the same proximity. You just call it a Never come over to my house and stay for the night at my house. My Crash on my couch. I'll spoon with Lego as long as I'm. he's willing to be a little spoon. If he wants to be a little spoon. Fair enough. On that bombshell, <laughs> we will bombshell. head out of this episode. This That's been episode gear. 160. We're ending on bombshells now? We are. That was a one quite, as you said, bleaching pedophilia. That was... The order of the day. Um, we're going to get into. That. We cannot name the title that. We will get bad. We press. are not. We are not going to name the title that. Um, yeah, it's been a fun episode. It's been a different one. Been informative. But had lots good. of discussion. I really enjoyed this episode. It's been a fun one. We. It's been a while since we tackled big topics like that. So it's always good to do. It's good um, that we can do proper journalistic topics, even though we're making fun of things. Yeah, we can handle the heavy subjects, just not in a. Dig- not in a good way. We got not in a dignified or professional manner. We've got. But range. until next week, we will see you guys next. W- yeah, next week. What the fuck am I on about? Let's just go. <laughs> fuck this shit. I've had enough of Black Friday. The weather's cold. There's people standing on my toes. The sun's and I coming got a f- up. Fucking Game Boy Advance out of all this shit. On my toes. I had one ten years ago. Fuck this shit, guys. Bye, guys. Get me a fucking. Tim's or something. Oh, I need boy. a copy. Bye. Tune Bye. in. Tune in next time when you tune in.